Good morning if you are in the West Coast and good afternoon if you are in the East Coast. My name is Baki, Baki Tezjan. I teach history at the University of California in Davis and I do the uh, various online meetings of uh, the Ottoman and Turkish Studies Association. Uh, today, we are here to uh, talk about what's going on at Boğaziçi University. I have a very brief presentation to share with you um, to introduce the panel at large and just say a few things about our, our upcoming programming, which I will keep very short. You all know why you are here. You signed up to listen to the ongoing struggle for academic freedom and autonomy at Boğaziçi University from five Boğaziçi University professors. Next Friday, we're gonna have Ukraine from Ottoman times to today. If those of you are interested, please remember to join us. Next month, we will have a what another WhatsApp meeting featuring Sharon Mizbani, the winner of what says 2021 Sydney Fisher Graduate Student Paper Prize. She'll present her paper furnishing the Ottoman Empire, Crystal Objects and Sacred Spaces. In a month, October 28th, we'll have another Turkey Now session focusing on Yusene Yusnesne, an encyclopedia project of 100 years, 100 piece telling the history of the Republic of 100 years through 100 objects, which is done by uh, scholars who lost, many of them, many of them lost their jobs because they signed the Academics for Peace petition. So in a sense, the kind of things that we are talking about today, uh, we'll keep talking about some of them next month as well, uh, academic freedom in Turkey. And on November 11th on Veterans Day, uh, we'll uh, be remembering Professor Halil Inalcik through a uh, tribute volume that our colleagues Linda Darling and Farib uh, Zernebov uh, co-edited. So it's gonna be a sort of remembrance meeting uh, in November. The For our audience, the topic of today is nothing new. Our very first Turkey Now meeting back in 2021 was actually on this topic too, higher education and academic freedom in Turkey, Boğaziçi yesterday and today. We had eight uh, former and current professors of Boğaziçi University with us, and you can watch that on YouTube. Just like that day, uh, today's uh, session will be chaired by my colleague, Lori Brandt. Uh, Last year, I introduced her as professor. This year, she's Professor Emerita. Uh, she just retired uh, from her position at the University of uh, Southern California. Uh, her bio extensive books are right there, but I'm just going to emphasize something uh, that she does outside of University of Southern California that she continues to do, and that is chairing the Committee on Academic Freedom of the Middle East Studies Association. Uh, Committee on Academic Freedom has a wing that looks on a Middle East, North Africa, and another wing that looks on uh, the US. And as you can see, this committee published various letters on Boazici. And last year, the annual award of academic freedom was given to Boazici faculty, students, and alumni uh, for the struggle that they are still uh, continuing. And, uh, just in case you're wondering, are there any letters on U.S.? Yes, there are letters on U.S. coming out of Committee on Academic Freedom as well. But now, without further ado, I'm going to let uh, Lori take the microphone and she'll introduce our panelists to you. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Vaki, and um, thank you to all of today's panelists for being here and also all of those of you who are joining us through through Zoom for this really important discussion. Um, Vaki has already mentioned the various uh, interventions that uh, our, the Committee on Academic Freedom has made with regard to Turkey in general, but uh, with regard to Wazici in particular, the Academic Freedom Award last year. I should also say the MESA board issued a statement of solidarity with the protests of Wazici as well. Um, and in making the award and in, through our various letters, the importance was to highlight the courageous resistance of the Boazici students, faculty, alumni, and also send a strong message of solidarity and support for these peaceful protests. So that's just to underline the fact that it really is my privilege today to chair this panel. Um, I want to begin with just brief introductions of our five distinguished speakers. Uh, so uh, in the order in which they'll presenting, the, we're going to do two rounds, but in the order in which they'll be presenting in the first round, we have Jan Jandan, 
who is an independent filmmaker and was a lecturer at Boazici uh, for 15 years in the film studies program of the Department of Western Languages and Literatures. He holds a BA in film and video from Hampshire College and a Master of Fine Arts in Film and Media Arts from Temple University. He was the first full-time faculty member to be dismissed by the government appointed president and he's been fighting a legal battle since then. Um, the second presenter is Mine Edesh. She's professor and chair at the Department of Political Science and International Relations at Boazici. She works on various aspects of Turkey's political economy, with her recent works focusing primarily on migration and urban transformation. Our third speaker will be Professor Cengiz Kurla, a professor of history at the Ataturk Institute for Modern Turkish History at Boazici. He holds a PhD from Binghamton University and previously taught at Purdue. He has been working and publishing primarily on 19th century Ottoman history. Our fourth speaker, Cidem Kafesiolu, uh, has a BA and MA from Boazici and a PhD from Harvard uh, and is professor at the history department at Boazici. She's working on aspects of early modern Ottoman urban, architectural, and visual culture. She's the author of Constantinopolis, Istanbul, uh, cultural Encounter, Imperial Vision, and the Construction of the Ottoman Capital, of 2000, with, uh, published in 2010, and co-editor of Companion to Early Modern Istanbul with Shireen Hamadi in 2021. Professor Kafesiolo is chair of the history department, was chair uh, at Boazici in, from 2014 to 2017, and is currently a member of the University Senate uh, as elected representative of the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. Our fifth presenter is Professor Unal Zengunovus. Uh, he's professor and current chair in the Department of Economics at Boazici. He holds a PhD in economics from the University of Pennsylvania and a Bachelor of Science in Engineering from Boazici. He has done theoretical as well as policy-oriented research in public economics, industrial organization, and environmental economics. He serves as the director of the Center for Economic Design and as a steering committee member of the Social Policy Forum at Boazici. So as I mentioned, we, the plan is to have two rounds uh, and the first uh, round of presentations will follow the, uh, the following topics. Professor Jandan will be speaking, will be giving a chronology of events uh, using some visuals. Professor Edesh uh, will be talking about the broader political context. Professor Kirle will be talking about the political significance of Wazici's Roberts College background. Professor Kafesiolu uh, will be talking about the institutional culture and the principles of governance of Wazici. And Professor Zengunobuz will be talking about the nature of the intervention by the state, the seizure of the University Senate and Executive Council. All right, so that's the plan. Uh, and so at this point, without any further delay, I'd like to turn the, uh, open the mic for uh, Professor uh, Jandan, please. Uh, thank you very much, Lori. Thank you very much, Baki. Uh, thank you very much for organizing this uh, event and, and uh, for giving us a chance to meet with you all. Uh, what I would like to do is, as Lori said, is to uh, give you some kind of a chronology and some kind of a timeline of what has been going on at Boazic University for the last 21 months using some uh, images from our ar collective archive, uh, so to speak. Um, it's going to be difficult to fit 21 months into um, um, uh, about a 10, 10 minutes or so, so uh, please bear with me. And because it's collective, I also encourage uh, my colleagues here to, uh, you know, turn on their mics and, and, and uh, uh, intervene and, and, uh, and also contribute uh, if they would like to do that. So uh, let me share my screen. Okay, I hope it's going on. Uh, yes, there's no problem, I hope. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, so uh, I would like to take you to uh, January 2nd, uh, 2021, our New Year's present. Uh, we got uh, the news that um, um, the, um, the president uh, of the country, uh, Erdogan, has appointed a, a new rector uh, to Boazici University. Uh, his name was Midik Blue. It was a name that we haven't heard before. Uh, and immediately we decided to uh, organize uh, a, an academic forum uh, online uh, where over 100, uh, 400 faculty people got together. 
and uh, we started uh, as faculty but uh, at the same time simultaneously our students and alumni also started their resistance so as the stakeholders of Boazic University we started to resist uh, and uh, uh, let me yes uh, so uh, students started protesting right away uh, it was uh, online uh, but but right after the curfew was over because it was the time uh, of the pandemic and we had to stay at home um, during the weekend and uh, on monday uh, one of the first things that the students uh, uh, did was they uh, made it quite uh, public that they were opposing this uh, appoint government appointment uh, and here is a symbolic obviously uh, a wax seal uh, that says that uh, that this building the rectorate building has been uh, sealed uh, by the university uh, uh, Boğaziçi University students uh, because uh, uh, Melih Blue he, who was um, uh, um, uh, an AKP supporter and a politician uh, was appointed uh, centrally by the government uh, and then um, another symbolic image was the handcuffs that um, the, the, the security personnel used uh, to lock the doors of uh, the university um, and that became a very symbolic uh, image um, that was January 4th and um, and uh, student protests were going on starting Monday January 4th uh, obviously uh, students were making it quite uh, clear that they didn't want uh, this particular rector and uh, the protests uh, included uh, clashes uh, with the police uh, this is right at the gate of the university uh, and we as faculty members on january 5th 2021 we started our noon vigils which has been going on to this date um, and uh, we found this symbolic uh, and embodied um, uh, act of protest uh, to show our disapproval of the appointment uh, of this rector. And this was also very much uh, in the news um, as well. And the, um, the imagery of the, um, the handcuffs was also carried on to different uh, um, cartoons uh, uh, as well. Um, and uh, as you can see in this particular image uh, students were very active both on campus and and off campus uh, in these protests and um, the, the lgbti plus flags the transgender flag and the rainbow flag uh, they were also um, visible uh, as uh, students were uh, carrying these uh, flags as well and that was targeted obviously uh, by um, the government, which I'm going to come to uh, later. Uh, this is uh, a, a, a protest that took place um, early on in January, uh, where um, uh, we met with uh, uh, alumni groups. So uh, alumni were also a very important uh, part of uh, the st stakeholders uh, who were uh, resisting. Uh, we also started uh, these teach-ins uh, in front of the rector's uh, building where uh, different faculty members uh, gave these uh, open uh, classes. Um, and we continued uh, with our uh, vigil where we turned our backs uh, in numbers uh, to the rector's uh, building, to the rectorate. Uh, this is from uh, 15th of January 2021. And of course, then uh, the weather uh, changed and uh, there were these uh, nice scenes of uh, protesting, uh, regardless what the weather situation uh, is like, and not only us, but also with our uh, dear um, uh, campus uh, animals. And uh, this also inspired other people to create this kind of uh, imagery using uh, photographs uh, from our vigil, uh, creating these kind of collages. Um, and uh, a, a group of students uh, formed an art collective and they they um, started uh, exhibiting certain imagery uh, on campus as part of this uh, free um, art exhibit. Uh, 
uh, on campus. Uh, and uh, they were targeted uh, because of uh, some imagery, imagery that they used in this particular uh, art exhibit, uh, uh, including this collage work that had LGBTI plus flags on its four corners and, and in, uh, some uh, religious imagery. And uh, four students, five students were taken on, uh, under custody. Uh, and later on, uh, two students were arrested and uh, two students were put under uh, house arrest because of that particular imagery. And this was also the time when the government uh, attacked uh, the uh, student LGBTI plus club, uh, which I will talk about uh, later on, which resulted in the closure of the uh, student club. And we continued uh, with with our um, uh, protests, and there were also some creative um, uh, interventions in the imagery, where uh, the police um, um, uh, um, shields became, in a way, canvases where um, students called for the resignation uh, of um, the appointed uh, president. Um, uh, and uh, we continued with our vigils calling for the resignation of the appointed um, uh, uh, president. And uh, let me continue quickly. Uh, we put this uh, 200 uh, pieces of our call for the resignation of uh, Melik Bulu, the then uh, president of the university, at the uh, door uh, of the rectorate uh, building. Um, also, um, uh, there were many solidarity events uh, around the uh, world uh, where uh, alumni and other supporters of uh, Boazici resistance were uh, coming together and also expressing their solidarity for the resistance. Uh, that one was from Berlin, this one is uh, from um, uh, Paris, and here's another one from um, San Francisco. Um, that took place on the 7th of February in 2021. Um, uh, this is the um, door of the uh, student uh, LGBTI plus club after the closure of the club. Uh, again, uh, students uh, continue their protest even uh, uh, by, by posting uh, uh, signs and flags at the door uh, of the, uh, the the student office, uh, and we also contributed uh, with uh, our rainbow um, umbrellas, uh, um, showing our solidarity with uh, with LGBTI plus uh, students and their club, um, uh, and also uh, again I talked about the five people who were taken under custody and uh, also uh, put under house arrest. There was a call for solidarity for them as well. Uh, we also uh, provided this this imagery, uh, disseminated this imagery uh, through the, to the to the press, and provided them uh, with in a way content because the press wasn't allowed onto the campus um, uh, because of uh, on, by the order of the uh, um, um, uh, the president. Um, I will continue um, a bit quickly. Yeah, uh, this imagery um, uh, appeared on the website of um, of the university, and we learned that uh, uh, overnight in February of 2021, two new schools were established by the central government. One was the School of Law, and the other one was the School of uh, Communications. And uh, this person was the appointed dean of um, the School of uh, Law. Um, uh, uh, we continued with uh, uh, our vigil uh, in the months to come, as you can see. Uh, and uh, this is from uh, March 8th, 2021, the Women's Day. Uh, and here, uh, especially women uh, faculty the female faculty were in the forefront uh, of that particular vigil on that day, and they returned um, these um, pastries or whatever it was <laughs> uh, that the appointed uh, rector sent to um, uh, female faculty. 
and um, here it is here it is uh, it, it says uh, return to sender we do not accept we do not give up um, and we also um, had to uh, go to the courthouse in Chalayan uh, because our students uh, who were taken under custody or imprisoned were being tried uh, in court uh, for being part of uh, the protests. Um, uh, here's a press statement read by one of our uh, colleagues uh, at the Chalayan courthouse. Um, uh, and and we uh, by uh, holding these signs that says uh, hands off our uh, students or hands off my student, uh, we tried to show our solidarity for uh, our students and to protest um, uh, the treatment uh, by the police uh, of our students and not only the police but the the uh, director as well. Uh, we also got support from other universities. Uh, this is a picture from Ottu. Uh, the Middle Eastern Technical University in Ankara and the faculty there are uh, holding a vigil in support of uh, our uh, resistance at, at Bozic University. Uh, and uh, here is an image of uh, 5,000 sig uh, signatures uh, by the alumni, again in solidarity and in protest. Um, and here is a celebration of our 100th day of our resistance on campus. Sorry. Um, uh, and a publication by uh, our students, uh, um, uh, Resistance Post, it's uh, titled. Uh, and um, again, uh, a cartoon that uh, is inspired by our vigil. Um, and uh, we try to. Uh, show the public um, these um, damages that um, uh, that have accumulated uh, at the Bosch University and one of them being the closure of the LGBTI plus club but that's just one of them uh, here we have a list of 40 uh, damages uh, and this report damage report is uh, dated uh, 29th of April 2021 um, and one of the other things that we did is that every uh, Friday uh, we read out a bulletin uh, publicly, uh, recorded it and disseminated the video as well, uh, that talked about what has been going on uh, in the past uh, week in terms of mostly the damages that we have received, but also uh, in terms of our uh, demands. Um, Here's another vigil with our students. And this time the students are holding a sign that says, hands off my instructor. Uh, another thing that we did is we had these, continued to have these teach-ins or open uh, classes where different faculty members um, talked about uh, issues related to um, uh, the resistance, uh, such as uh, academic freedoms, uh, university autonomy, uh, uh, as you can see uh, uh, on the board and, 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 and discussed what is a university. Um, I will have to uh, move a bit faster. And here are some of our demands that uh, we uh, uh, turned into a, a visual and uh, and then uh, my colleagues will talk more about this, but uh, when our Senate was under attack, uh, when our uh, votes of our senators were um, under attack in the Senate, we also um, uh, express ourselves by saying that we are um, standing with our um, uh, elected uh, senators uh, and put those signs at the door of the rector's building um, and I find this cartoon to be kind of uh, interesting that it, it, it shows that, uh, you know, Boaz Tree faculty is kind of uh, car uh, carrying the, um, maybe the weight of, uh, of the country on their shoulders. Um, 
Uh, same thing with our executive council. Uh, they were trying to um, manipulate the votes at the executive council, and uh, we expressed our um, solidarity uh, with uh, the members of the executive council who were um, uh, legitimately uh, there and, and, and representing us. Um, uh, this is another uh, visual that shows that uh, uh, the directors uh, and uh, his uh, vice rectors were uh, using multiple votes um, at the Senate uh, because they were holding multiple positions in the Senate, which was obviously um, a significant problem and it wasn't uh, lawful uh, and just. Um, Uh, yeah, another uh, teaching or an open class that talked about uh, gender, uh, gender 101 class. Uh, and uh, students were uh, putting uh, these signs in protest that read uh, appointed uh, rector or trustee rector uh, onto the uh, sign uh, of the rector's building. And when uh, the rector's, of, rector's uh, office started investi investigating the students, uh, we as faculty people took on that uh, act of protest. Um, I'm gonna continue kind of quickly. Uh, um, this is the day uh, <laughs> I was dismissed from my position, uh, 16th of July, 2021. I'll can talk about that later. Um, and this was also the day, this was also the time when the first appointed director was removed from office by the uh, president of the country, uh, Erdogan. And here are some students uh, uh, sending a message to Erdogan saying, uh, you have uh, 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 gotten rid of uh, the previous rector, but you forgot uh, his um, Vice Rector uh, Naji Inji, who uh, was uh, the um, uh, second appointed director to come. Um, sorry. Um, yeah. Um, another cartoon um, and uh, uh, protests in solidarity of my dismissal. Um, and also our protests uh, together with uh, our students. Um, and uh, I also would like to talk about um, this alternative graduation ceremony that we held on campus last summer uh, because the uh, administration uh, decided not to have a graduation ceremony, have an online ceremony, and we decided to have an in-person alternative graduation uh, ceremony with our students and their uh, family members. Uh, the protests also continued not only as in terms of our um, uh, in the form of our uh, student uh, faculty vigils, but also our students were uh, holding various uh, 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 protests uh, at the gate of the university, and they weren't allowed by the police to exit the university. Um, and two of our students were uh, imprisoned, and they had to spend uh, more than ninety days in prison. So we uh, spent, uh, we showed our solidarity uh, by holding their uh, uh, pictures during our vigils. Uh, this is 11th of October last year, uh, where I was denied entry to my university and uh, my uh, colleagues showed their solidarity by coming to the gate of the university. Um, uh, and also there were clashes by uh, with the um, uh, sorry uh, there were clashes with the uh, on campus security personnel uh, when students were uh, trying to uh, express um, um, their opinions and their protest uh, peacefully. Uh, not only that, uh, not only with the on campus security personnel, but uh, riot police was uh, called onto the campus, and there, these were the scenes that we haven't we haven't seen before uh, uh, on our campus. And they were uh, arrested. Uh, most of them were uh, taken uh, into custody. Some of them were arrested. So 
uh, this harassment of our students has been going on uh, for quite a long time since the beginning of the uh, of the resistance. Um, uh, and one of our demands has been uh, that the police presence uh, on the campus and around the campus uh, should be ended. Um, and uh, also in the fall of 2021, about a year ago, uh, another full-time faculty person uh, was dismissed, uh, Mohan Ravichandran, Professor Mohan Ravichandran, uh, who was a faculty person at the math department. Um, uh, I will continue a bit fast. Uh, yeah, uh, this was another protest uh, by our students uh, uh, that talked about uh, the sit weird situation uh, where where uh, the appointed director used uh, a law that was designed to protect uh, abused women uh, from their abusers uh, for uh, to 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 keep uh, students away uh, from uh, the director's building. Um, so pro uh, students were protesting that, uh, and also uh, the university press uh, was terminated uh, by the appointed uh, rector by uh, when the the staff of the uh, university press was uh, uh, dismissed. Uh, this is uh, prote in protest of that. Uh, so we don't have a, a functioning university press anymore. Um, uh, and also, our um, three uh, of our deans, elected deans, were removed from our, our uh, from office. Uh, we also uh, uh, were protesting that uh, hands of my deans and 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 uh, members of uh, different uh, schools, uh, arts and humanities, uh, uh, the education, school of education, etc. The, the three uh, schools uh, who, who have lost their elected uh, deans were in protest in front of their uh, uh, buildings. Um, uh, and uh, then uh, this was, the, in a way, a year anniversary uh, of uh, the appointment of the um, uh, director when we have uh, scenes of snow again. Uh, another uh, March 8th Women's Day uh, protest um uh, and then finally we came to the 50th uh, sorry 500th uh, day of uh, Boaz University again we celebrated that uh, with this particular um uh, this, this particular get together uh, in protest uh, and uh, another uh, another thing i like to mention in this timeline so to speak is the closure of our uh, mathematical um, uh, sciences uh, center uh, and uh, this is a, a, a protest in, um, in front of that uh, center that was closed down by the the appointed administration um, and also uh, we, our uh, resistance has been part of um, different art exhibits and this is one of them uh, this was a very uh, um, a famous viral video that was circulated where uh, we were uh, trying to hold our vigil uh, during a, um, a snowstorm. And uh, uh, this kind of showed how uh, uh, we were adamant about not giving up at all in terms of our uh, protests at the university. Um, and uh, this is uh, an image of our two uh, professors, uh, professor, uh, emeritus, emeriti uh, professors, uh, who were denied uh, uh, their right to teach at Boazic University. Uh, and now we have tens of uh, courses that are not uh, being offered uh, because of uh, this um, ban by the uh, appointed administration. Um, and let's see yeah i think uh, this gives sorry uh, maybe i took um uh, too, uh, too long to 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 show you all the images but um, i hope this gives you some uh, sense of a context and 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 some kind of a timeline so that uh, when we talk uh, in detail about uh, certain aspects of what's going on at bozici this will uh, maybe uh, help you uh, to to imagine a little bit better thank you very much
Thank you very much, Professor Jandan. That was a fantastic um, overview of a lot of extremely impressive forms of resistance and just a, a real tribute to the, the tenacity of the faculty, the students, and the alumni. Um, and the visuals are, are, are wonderful as well. So thank you so much. Um, Professor Edesh, we'll turn the microphone over to you. Well, thank you, everyone. And thank you for giving us an opportunity to, uh, to share our experiences for the last 20 months now. Um, this is um, an update on what's been going on in some ways. Um, I am, and, and looking back onto these videos that also sort of make me choke up as well in sort of, oh my God, what, have, what kind of a torture we've been through over the last um, two years almost. Uh, so thank you, John, for uh, g giving that overview. Um, I'm going to, you know, sort of take the discussion a little bit uh, towards the sort of a political context within which this is happening and just raise the question and why is this happening now? And why are they targeting Boazici so much? And I want to just give you, a, and, and let me just time myself so I won't be more than eight or nine minutes. Um, hold on. Um, I want to give you a sort of an, a sense of the political context, you know, so the broader context within which this is happening. Uh, and I am, apologies for those of you who have already listened me um, sort of uh, complaining about the democratic decline uh, in Turkey, but, um, but that's what's been happening. The context within which this is happening is, is a sort of a severe case of democratic decline and, and democratic collapse, uh, you know, sort of uh, across almost any kind of indicators uh, that you look at. Um, and um, and this sort of this democratic backsliding literature basically frames the entire discussion as a sort of um, an issue where um, the cost of leaving power uh, becomes, you know, sort of using the rational choice uh, language, the cost of leaving power, leaving power becomes more and more. It's a, you, you know, sort of the executive, the existing government is going to do everything possible to stay in power because just leaving is not an option. The cost of leaving is, 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 is increasing across the board, right? And then of course, the cost of suppression, the cost of uh, silencing, um, which is really what's happening um, to Boazici right now is also declining, right? You know, sort of um, the, the consequences of, um, uh, of what happens right now to Boazici, at least politically speaking, um, to this administration, to this particular government in power um, is minimal because they, they have this incredible capacity as I'll be talking about, uh, you know, of criminalization, of using the judiciary system uh, for, um, for harassing, for uh, jailing um, the, the opposition in general. Um, so, um, so this is the context of democratic backsliding or democratic collapse. And um, there are different modalities through which this has happened. Uh, in the Turkish context, which you're seeing a sort of a microcosm of uh, in the Boazici University uh, context. So what's happening, uh, it's, a, it's a classic case of executive aggrandizement, right? You know, sort of you move from a parliamentary system uh, to a, a presidential system in the aftermath of a, of a coup attempt. And this has been a sort of a, a, a political system that as where the president has now become the uh, ultimate <laughs> executive king um, that ends up in making all these decisions across the board, which also explains this kind of top-down appointments of rectors and, uh, you know, sort of, um, you know, you know, sort of, and, you know, even the head of the football federation seemed to be, uh, you know, sort of uh, be put into a litmus test of political loyalty. So um, the idea, the, the, the scope with which uh, the executive branch of the government now that they also garner a majority in the parliament, but still this is now a presidential system, the, the, the you know, Turkey style presidential system with no checks and balances, right? You know, sort of, um, so um, that has been um, the context, particularly starting uh, with 2016 after the, uh, you know, so the emergency rule and after the, um, the coup attempt and, and the normalization in some ways of this emergency rule by rule by decree where the president's uh, power is sort of almost uncontained right now. So that's one dimension. And in some ways, again, we're seeing the microcosm of that in Boazic University, where the rector 
uh, is trying to emulate and try to become the new Tayyip Erdogan in some ways for the university with a top-down management and making all the decisions, uh, academic decisions, administrative decisions by himself. Um, obviously, the, uh, the executive council and the Senate has now been instrumentalized, you know, which is also what happens in these kind of uh, undemocratic countries, right? All these institutions that are supposed to be deliberative uh, institutions, represented institutions are now instrumentalized for the executive aggrandizement, for legitimizing simply rubber stamping, if you will, uh, the power of the president um, as such. So that's one dimension that I want to sort of underscore. This is happening on a macro level as well as at the micro level at the university. Um, the second element of this, obviously, um, is the idea of there's a whole political economy dimension to this, right? This is a country that is growing increasingly unequal um, and has been uh, in economic crisis, uh, particularly again intensifying uh, since 2018, uh, a huge currency crisis, and there is an enormous economic uh, instability. And, and in times of political uncertainty, we know that um, that's, that's a sort of a, also a, um, a fertile ground for, uh, for people to, um, for the government at least to mobilize or to appeal to um, to some of these um, um, you know sort of insecurities as such. Now this is a double-edged sword, and I think at least we can talk about this economic crisis now. Um, you know, sort of forcing the government to rethink or forcing the government to um, to engage in alternative policies to to continue to manufacture consent. But this kind of sort of economic crisis and economic instability are also times where the executive aggrandizement also sort of continues in a sense, that, you know, sort of because I am the only one that can save us, the, you know, save the country out of this economic crisis. I represent the, um, the sort of the stability, continuity. Uh, so the usual kind of the populist discourse that emerges in these kind of um, unequalitarian context. Now, Keep in mind this political economy argument is also, you know, sort of again a huge um, blow onto the entire higher education system. And I want to tie that into Boazici again from macro to the micro dimensions. The higher education system, in the midst of this whole economic crisis, um, has also collapsed. Um, and it's not an understatement. I'm not exaggerating this. It has collapsed on many different fronts because um, the, this particular administration has seen higher education. Uh, and the university establishment as a way of uh, revitalizing uh, the new cities by establishing literally a university at each and every city uh, as a part of urban transformation. Um, so now we now have 200 plus uh, universities um, that are producing university graduates that are now unemployed. Turkey is one of the highest a university graduate unemployed youth population, <laughs> which means you have this, edu you know, sort of universities that are presumably providing a lot of uh, education, but uh, it's almost almost a sort of a deferral of unemployment numbers for another four years because you're not giving them the kind of skills and the kind of university education that uh, that people desire. Now, add to this, you know, so which also speaks to the unsustainability. Um, of this kind of a higher education system and um, the kind of sort of expenditures on higher education system. So that is why Boazici, in the midst of this kind of a political economic environment, is an anomaly. This is a public university, which is relatively egalitarian because we recruit students, the best students across the country. Um, and because it's public, it's free, and that's why the best and the, and the brightest can come to this university. So uh, in some ways, it's a sort of, it has this kind of an equalizing effect. That kind that mission is very important uh, for us, at least has been for the last 40 years uh, of, uh, of the university as such, as a public university. So again, a big anomaly in this process of um, skyrocketing numbers of universities, low quality universities that are uh, sprawling across uh, different cities um, that are not producing any, um, any outcome. So instead of um, transforming each of these universities into potential uh, Boazici's, uh, if you will, um, the administration has simply said, well, this is not what we want. We want actually these kind of run of the mill standardized uh, university system that is going to reinforce our own political will, you know, sort of 
views and our own, um, you know, sort of uh, reproduce the loyalty uh, that we want. Um, and hence, you know, we built these, we paid for these public institutions, and that's the argument. We paid for this, the government pays for this, so of course you're going to be loyal to our views, right? So that's the, the kind of mentality that has emerged uh, in the process of this kind of sort of um, uh, view of this higher higher education. So you've got a, literally a rising youth unemployment, rising inequality, an enormous economic instability, um, where the youth really wants to leave the country now, you know, sort of not even, you know, sort of leave the country no matter what, because they don't, they know there's their prospects, their future is no longer uh, assured uh, in this country. And, you know, again, the Boazici has always been a place where um, this is, you know, sort of providing this kind of an opportunity of transformation and, uh, you know, sort of um, literally getting a quality uh, education for free. And that public mission um, has always been a very primary core of this institution as such. Um, but again, unfortunately, that's been a huge, uh, huge target. Um, now, going back to my democratic decline story, so we talked about ex executive aggrandizement, we talked about a sort of political economy dimension of this, we talked about the, the crisis of higher education. Uh, one also a huge element of this um, in part of, you know, in places where their democratic decline occurs is ideological polarization. And that too is being a part of the bigger story here in Turkey, where the, you know, sort of the ideological, the degree to which you see this polarization has gone into this, um, you know, sort of um, situation where there are now everybody is in their own echo chambers. Um, the idea of having a dialogue uh, between the AKP supporters versus the opposition party supporters is nowhere to be found because there's been a severe, um, severe damage, if you will, um, and severe absence of dialogue, and plus um, the idea of the tendency of this particular government to criminalize any type of dissent, to criminalize any type of opposition. So, um, you know, putting them in jail, you know, sort of uh, just for expressing their uh, views and protests. And this is what, what John has just simply shown in, in the case of uh, students, right, you know, sort of they were simply protesting in the campus and that's within the, the sort of the boundaries of the campus as well and releasing a sort of heavily armed police officers onto the students and have them and forcefully putting them into custody only to be released later on and a few obviously stayed uh, even in jail but the, the idea of harassment and criminalization and and silencing uh, is this sort of a process of silencing opposition you sort of how dare you um that you kind of sort of uh, question what we're doing, uh, we, which some ways, again, you know, that's what's happening uh, at Boazici as well. Um, this degree of, uh, of criminalization also speaks to the idea of, uh, you know, complete intolerance for, um, for dissent, for pluralism, for ideas that are uh, questioning, that I, and literally ideas for, you know, any form of critical thinking, which in some ways is the death of the university as we know. Right, uh, and and in some ways, this sort of this degree of ideological polarization is absolutely crucial here because that dissent, um, that fear of dissent, that fear of opposition is is um, is is basically what's fueling this particular uh, administration, and also explains the targeting of Boazici because Boazici is seen as a place of criticizing the government, right? Or raising questions of why are you doing this, right? What's the purpose of this, right? You're, you know, sort of the idea of critical thinking is, which is what the mission of a, what a university should be all about, is, is simply incompatible in a context of this kind of a, a full-fledged democratic, uh, democratic collapse. And unfortunately, Boazici um, has been this kind of a sort of, um, uh, you know, sort of, by the way, it's not happening only to Boazici, and you've seen this um, in the videos as well. A lot of the good universities across the country has been targeted and has been, um, you know, captured uh, uh, in some ways. This is the story of political capturing. Uh, this is a story of political confiscation in some ways where you're intolerant of any kind of dissent and or dissenting institutions. And so you're not gonna tolerate any institutional autonomy, uh, let alone any, any form of economic or uh, academic freedom. So um, this idea, and how do you do this? By capturing institutions. You capture the judiciary, by the way, the po overly politicization, I forgot to mention that. 
you capture the judiciary as well so that it becomes easy not only to criminalize, you criminalize them, but you also, the, the legal system doesn't back you up. And then that essentially, and you, uh, you end up in jail because the judges are also scared, right? Uh, the excessive um, politicization uh, of the judiciary system, um, you know, is also part of this executive aggrandizement that I'm talking about. So, um, so in on this kind of an autocratic environment, um, we did manage to survive over the last uh, 20, uh, 20 months, and we did manage to sort of at least raise our voice uh, we, we peacefully and lawfully. Uh, we've been filing suits all over the place, by the way, uh, uh, against this particular administration. Um, and you know, sort of the, our lawsuits are uh, increasing all over the front, um, you know, um, basically using peaceful means as much as possible um, to raise our voice and to basically continue to defend what we have been defending for so many months and for so many years, frankly, as an institution, which is academic freedom, um, institutional autonomy, and literally a, a place for critical thinking. And hopefully we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Izesh. Um, I think this, you know, these comments, um, putting everything in, in the larger context, not only showing the sort of replication of patterns at the national level, at the, at the university level, um, including the degree of polarization, but then also this very important issue as well of the, the crisis in higher education in general as a result of the economic crisis. This is really important uh, to keep this all in perspective. So thank you again. Um, before we move on to Professor Kurle, I just want to suggest that um, since we may not have time for Q&A at the end of this first round uh, of the panelists' remarks, perhaps if you have questions, um, I'll suggest that you put them in the, um, the chat. Uh, and that way, perhaps the, the panelists can also view the chat and maybe incorporate some answers then into their, uh, their comments in the second round. Okay. So let me then, without any further delay, uh, turn to Professor Kurla, please. Thank you, Professor Brandt, uh, for moderating this event. And thank you, Baki, for putting this together. And thank you, participants. Uh, what I am going to talk about in the first round is against the backdrop that Mina that had just uh, painted that I want to uh, zoom in a little bit to uh, to Boazici University and its cultural significance uh, with respect to its uh, long history. Uh, it is a public university in the last 50 years or so, but it has uh, a tradition of uh, education going back all the way to the mid uh, 19th century. Many of the things that I will uh, be saying will be familiar to uh, the people who have a certain uh, understanding of, of history of Boazic and, and Robert College. So uh, I want uh, their forgiveness, but but I think it is it is important to understand to put it in the context what has been happening uh, in the last uh, two years and in the last five six years perhaps in as as Mina had had been saying. Well, actually, uh, Boazici, you know, as a preface to what I have to say, Boazici University was spared from serious government intervention for a very long time, uh, unlike other universities whose rectors, presidents have routinely been appointed by government with uh, over the political purposes. Uh, the three rectors that who served between 2004 and 2016 uh, were the uh, clear choice of the university-wide elections. They came by, uh, by elections by full-time faculty members and the choice of the university members was, was honored by the government and its president in each of these three occasions. And this is all the more uh, remarkable because the ruling party, Justice and Development Party, and uh, the president, uh, or formerly Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has been running this uh, uh, country for over uh, two decades. Boazici University, unlike other universities, were going by its business up until 19, uh, 2016. Uh, I don't want to go into the details, but I mean, soon after the failed military takeover attempt, the law that allowed university elections was changed and the president started to appoint directly uh, among, uh, among the uh, applicants. Boazic University is the most, uh, by far, is the most preferred uh, university among university applicants. Uh, every year, two to three million uh, students, people are taking uh, in 
in Turkey, this what is called this general university exam. Uh, this year, I think it was close to three million, and 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 just these are uh, the, the current numbers. Actually, actually uh, say that uh, six out of the first ten, sixty-eight of the first one hundred, and seven hundred and seventy-three of the first one thousand students had chosen Boğaziçi University and were placed in the Boğaziçi University. So this is by far, you know, Boğaziçi University is the most sought after, most popular among, uh, among uh, and choosing the brightest and the best students uh, in these university exams. But this is all the way, all the more remarkable, given the fact that this is actually a relatively new institution, I mean, compared to this. I mean, I don't want to suggest that there's the university tradition is going back in centuries, but at least this is a 50 year uh, long 50 uh, year old university with you know just unlike its traditionally strong uh, engineering departments uh, it has been established as a, as, a, as a liberal arts college but I think that this success in this uh, that was university had accomplished uh, over this short period of time uh, largely emanate uh, is, is is from the uh, from the, the the legacy that it had uh, overtaken from the from Robert College. And Robert College was uh, was established in 1863 uh, as an American uh, high school uh, as college in Istanbul. And unlike AUB and AUC, that's other two prominent American uh, institutions in, in Beirut and in Cairo, it was not run by uh, Near Eastern Board, but it was largely done by uh, a philanthropist. And this uh, institution, among many other uh, American and, and European uh, institutions had actually showed a remarkable uh, success and it was especially popular uh, in the late uh, 19th century among uh, non-muslim populations predominantly by the bulgarians and the greeks and the, and the, uh, and the, and later uh, the, the armenians uh, but it was also uh, this this strong uh, Yet tradition that Boğaziçi University had uh, overtaken from Boğaziçi, this, there, is, there is also this ambivalence because uh, on, the, on the one hand, this is a blessing uh, because more than a century long tradition in education and university governance were continued in Boğaziçi University after 1971. But also it is a, a source of infamy because of the ambivalence this university and Robert College previously held in nationalist political discourse. Robert College was an American school and for a long time, as I have said, its student body was composed overwhelmingly by non-Muslim uh, Ottoman subjects. And it became eventually in the late 19th century and early 20th century became a hotbed of nationalist separatist ideas among uh, students. And this, sus sus the, the suspicion on the part of the government and the ruling authorities that started during the reign of Abdul Hamid II had they acquired even hostile tones towards the college and similar other uh, international schools as uh, young Turk rulers in early 20th century embraced Turkish nationalism, which these hostility actually reached its climax uh, with the foundation of the Republic in, in 1923. So I want to emphasize this, this ambivalent attitude towards this Robert College and later to Boğaziçi University. Ambivalence on the one hand, it was acknowledged as a premier, uh, as, a, as an accomplished higher education institution. But on the other hand, it was uh, when political context was, uh, enough to stir up nationalist emotions it was used as as a as a as a punching bag for uh for the nationalist populist uh, discourses as if it was not local enough it was foreign element it was so to speak the fifth uh, column so even i don't remember when i read this but i think it could be uh, abdullah quran's memoirs that that he he was saying that it's actually when the politicians were speaking about Robert College and Boğaziçi University uh, before the cameras on that they 
uh, were talking about uh, these nationalist sentiments and how these these uh, striking these hostile tones. But on the other hand, when the cameras were turned off, that they were asking the the, the faculty members and the president how they actually uh, got their own children into the school to be educated. So that kind of an ambivalence that I am uh, I would like to emphasize. So it is, in other words. Uh, it is a very symbolically charged institution, not because of what it had achieved in the last 50 years, but it is precisely because of its history. Uh, I'm not saying Robert College and Boazich University were one and the same, but that stigma that was coming from Boazich University was kind of a humpback that Boazich University was never able to get rid of. It was an elitist institution, its faculty was uh, in the ivory towers, uh, insulating themselves from the public, handsomely situated campus overlooking the Bosphorus. So all of these, and regardless of the fact that all of its faculty were coming from different backgrounds, different socioeconomic status, as well as its student body, that uh, narrative that is feeding into this uh, nationalist populist discourse uh, stuck with Boazich. So it is in these uh, politically charged and symbolically charged context, perhaps it is uh, important to put uh, Boazich University and what has been happening in the last, uh, was, uh, was uh, happening in the last five, six years, and in particular in the last three years. Why university, why Boazich University is a target? Well, uh, what why they have been doing uh, they, they are doing what they have been doing. Why break something that is already working, if not perfectly, but somewhat well? Uh, well, it's it's going to sound like a bumper sticker, uh, but I think it sums up what has been happening in, with the institutional decline in the last five, six years that Turkey has been witnessing is that they do it because they can. I mean, it's... Uh, uh, they get away with it because there's not enough checks and balances to prevent them from what they uh, were able to do, what they aim to do. Uh, but if just from the bumper sticker into this, uh, perhaps a slightly deeper level, uh, they, I want to call this process as, as a reclamation or a reposition, so to speak. Uh, Boazici University, with its Robert College overtones and what, it was never local enough. It was never native enough. It was, it needed to be domesticated. It needed to be rendered uh, local, so to speak. So it is, in fact, that these uh, Boazici University actually uh, speaks to something uh, that this uh, Justice and Development Party had failed uh, in the last two, 20 years, which is perhaps they established political hegemony. They established even a certain model of hegemony, but they were what they were complaining themselves and confessing even that they were never able to achieve that cultural hegemony. So what I am uh, is in fact that this, this process of reclamation, I mean, this repossession, it is owning, it is a process of owning this institution. And owning this institution is going through dismantling it. So it is uh, through this, uh, this uh, uh, quite the, the, the policies that have been doing, the this dismissal of the rectors, the, the, the deans, uh, appointing a new rector, uh, appointing faculty members not according to necessarily merit but from from among the politically minded individuals they all attest to the uh, to, to something uh, that is this 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 is what the university has been built on in the last 50 years and even before Boazich University didn't have, uh, I mean, unlike many other universities, for instance, the, this university had they have never had a problem of preventing its uh, students wearing headscarf uh, into the university. I mean, when in the rarest of instances in 2007 and 2008, some of the uh, students, uh, women students who were wearing headscarves were prevented from entering into the uh, university on the basis of the, of 
uh, of uh, the right to be educated that the faculty and other students actually stood shoulder to shoulder with them. So these liberal, uh, egalitarian, and largely free from nepotism and that kind of culture that had been instituted in this university is being dismantled. Uh, and for the sake of, as I have said, to restructure it according to their own needs. So I think uh, what I would like to say as a, as a final note, that this is the struggle actually who owns the university. They say that we are the public uh, representatives. We are speaking on behalf of the public. This is a public university. We own this place. And what we are saying that we have academic autonomy, we are, our academic autonomy, intellectual autonomy is protected by our constitution and we are fighting and resisting to protect what constitutes, what it should be, and it should be protected by, uh, by, uh, by the constitution and what it requires to be a university. And in doing so, in, in, in John's presentation, we have never even a single day failed to do what we were supposed to do. We have never even a single day, we didn't give up teaching. Uh, we didn't, we, we, we never failed our administrative duties. We continue to go on our research and all the vigils that we do are being done at, uh, at noon during the, uh, during the uh, uh, official vacation and so on, so on and so forth. So as I have said, this is, I mean, this, this we are resisting and uh, to, to, to against this, uh, this reclamation, this repossession uh, unjustly uh, justified on their behalf uh, using this, this ambivalence that is emanating from its history and for our own autonomy and, uh, and such. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Kirle. Uh, uh, the fascinating and very nuanced presentation of how sort of history and culture interact and create a, a very interesting combination of sort of as you call it ambivalence, but also in some ways contradictions and how the university is perceived and what its what its role is. So thank you very much. Uh, let's then move to the presentation of Professor Cafesciolo. You done? You need to unmute, please. Yes, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, thank you. And I would also uh, start by thanking uh, Baki and the Ottoman and Turkish Studies Association uh, for uh, this opportunity to come together to, uh, to share our thoughts and to think together on, uh, on Boazici and through Boazici on issues of academic um, Freedom uh, on on Jengi's notes. I also just wanted to add that we really need to think more and know more about the this 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 imaginary of and the pathos of conquest and of repossession, as you termed it, within uh, within within this society at large, within, within this, this particular um, constitution at large. Um, now, I want to say a few things on, on the institution structure of, of Boazici and uh, on its mode of, uh, of, uh, of government in a way to kind of uh, pick up from where Cheng is left off uh, uh, talking about uh, Robert College but also because this uh, lies at the basis of, you know, what makes Boazici what it is, what makes it one of the uh, uh, most prestigious uh, universities uh, in Turkey. And I'd also like to suggest what also lies at the heart of the resistance to the intervention uh, the university has been subject to, what our we do not accept, we do not give up is based upon, or at least one aspect of it. Now, as Cengiz underlined, Boazici was founded through the transition of a small American college to the public uh, some 51 years ago. Now it was essentially a liberal arts college, which also offered degree programs in engineering. 
Uh, anyone familiar to the scene of higher education in Turkey will recognize Boğaziçi as one of the most prestigious. But let me underline that there is nothing evident or nothing obvious in this small private college becoming one of the highest ranking institutions of higher education in Turkey. Public university receiving the best students uh, with internationally renowned faculty and, uh, and programs. Um, what distinguishes Boazici among the greater majority of Turkish universities has been its staunch commitment to principles of academic freedom and to institutional autonomy with important implications for academic governments. Um, the institution has refined th these principles through the decades following its institution in 1971, and these were put uh, on paper uh, in 2012 at another moment when we were actually feeling uh, a uh, uh, perhaps uh, the possibility of an intervention to you know to the structure and the running of the uh, the university now to be a little more specific about this there are obviously different modes in which academic autonomy uh may be uh, uh practice the system in boazici uh is basically a model of of university governance where academic administrators from the rector to the deans to department heads are elected by related bodies are not appointed by higher level administrators this is a model that essentially works from bottom up whereby academic decisions are taken where the relevant knowledge and the relevant expertise is held that is in the departments in faculty councils and a number of commissions that are connected to them these are taken to higher decision making bodies the senate and the university executive council the fate of which i, I think you now will be commenting uh, more on after this process of deliberation in um uh, in the departments and uh, and other uh, other bodies uh, that is the decision making through searching for and reaching common ground through consultation and reference to the experience of the academic body has been uh, essential likewise broader decisions concerning the whole of the university such as the opening of a new school uh, uh such as the 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 one uh the, the two that john mentioned uh or the making of a new program uh was reached only after deliberation and debate in the department uh, in the departments and in the other uh, uh other schools now this is uh uh maybe a slow moving mechanism at times uh it may have its weaknesses as any system has but nevertheless it has proven efficient and to the advantage of the university in the long run it has asserted that uh the university has remained a hub of critical interrogative creative thinking uh it has remained a hub of production and transmission of knowledge in an environment of academic freedom again as Mina also underlined this is this is basically what the university should be all all about and I should note also that this was done within the straitjacket of the Turkish university law which is a product of the 1980 military coup in Turkey, whose aim was and remains mainly to bring all universities under strict bureaucratic and ideological control of the state. Uh, and after the coup uh, in the year 1992, democratic rector elections were once again initiated by Boazici were written into law and were taken up by other universities in uh, uh, in Turkey uh, uh, after this. And saying all this, of course, Boazici was and remained accountable vis-a-vis -vis the state and the 
higher councils of um uh, of of education the the university law this this 1982 law that i mentioned uh situates the rector the president of the university as the main decision taker uh which uh, uh which is a position uh which allows the rector basically uh anything from uh you know opening a new school to recruitment to what we have seen our colleagues here have been going through uh dismissal or suspension uh of uh, of faculty members etc the university rectors uh, of Boazici chose not to have recourse to this wide scala of power and prerogatives that were endowed on them by the university law. So this is also what distinguished Boazici, along with a few other uh, uh, universities in Turkey, uh, until uh, until the intervention that we uh, have been subject uh, to. Um, so this this bottom up uh, democratic mechanism in short is what allowed members of the university to build the institution and its parts uh, to improve on a model of participatory and merit based uh, governance uh, which also rendered academic freedom and institutional autonomy, not only abstract concepts that we live by in the university environment, but concrete practices of our everyday. Um, let me also say a few more things on this issue of the participatory uh, uh, process um, in relation to the resistance of the uh, Boazici academics, uh, alumni and, uh, and students uh, have organized and sustained uh, now for nearly two years after the, the launch of the intervention to discipline the faculty, the students, the staff, and to institute basically a centrally run and authoritarian mode of decision-making uh centrally and uh, uh authoritarian mode of recruitment uh in its uh in its place this uh this resistance is i think to an important degree grounded directly in this culture of participation former was faculty and students and as the present ones we are the ones who have built who have sustained who have revised who have worked tried to improve this system we have spent considerable time and effort in the smallest details of the the curriculum the organization of student and campus life alongside the students uh, and down to the kind of building materials to be used in restoration and landscaping projects people have been involved people have participated in and they have done this through 80 plus councils and commissions concerned with aspects of university life in which the larger part of the faculty have participated in one way or or another so simply put we're defined defending what we and former faculty have built and improved upon. Uh, and this is a sim system that has amply proved its capacity to ably run the university, to provide high quality public education uh, and research that is, that is grounded on principles of academic freedom. Um, we resist the current intervention uh, with the understanding that Bozici is an institution with a significant contribution to the public. And that this, this mindless intervention is causing significant public damage and, and loss, uh, not, only, uh, not only to this particular institution, but its damage and loss to the youth in Turkey uh, uh, at large. Uh, we've done a lot, and my my friends have uh, have uh, 
underlined a lot of this through peaceful resistance, through legal means, through trying to make our cause, not the Boazici uh, cause only, but the issue of academic freedom at large known to the public. Um, but we have at the same time witnessed the damage done to the workings that took decades to, uh, to improve on. Uh, let me stop here and uh, and uh, and pass this on to uh, to Unal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Cafesiolo. Uh, I, I was struck listening to your discussion of this sort of the, the bottom up form of of governance that has has characterized Boazici for so long that I think there are many institutions, uh, certainly in the United States, that that could benefit from. Um, the from you know seeing these experiences, hearing about them uh, more firsthand, because we, uh, at least coming from my, my private institution, um, we have none of that sort of input. That we're at best consulted, um, but don't have much uh, to say. So all the more the loss that the the government has has tried to undermine this form of uh, this amazing form of governance. Uh, all right, let me turn then to um, to Professor Zendinovus, who will be the last speaker in this first round of comments. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Bran and uh, Tez Jan, uh, for uh, organizing this uh, event, uh, and also to the Ottoman and Turkish Studies Association, which gives us uh, opportunity to uh, to, to speak uh, what we have been going through. Uh, my friends, uh, my colleagues have uh, already drawn uh, the general picture uh, very well uh, to uh, to reveal what uh, we have been going through. I'll try to keep my uh, comments uh, short and brief, and uh, I'll in fact uh, uh, keep them uh, personal to give a different uh, perspective, because I have very little to add uh, to the uh, excellent uh, overview they have presented, starting from John and uh, I mean, as in Genghis' uh, extremely uh, comprehensive uh, overview of the political situation in Turkey, as well as the historical um, uh, background to what Boazici is. And uh, she then uh, aptly uh, complimented what Genghis has, uh, has already said. And um, now uh, I became a student at Boazici University in 1979. I came to Boazici 43 years ago, and apart from about eight years that I, uh, uh, I stayed in the uh, United States for my PhD, my whole adult life has been spent here. Why? <laughs> now, I am not the only one. We have a large number of faculty members who are actually uh, very similar to, who have very similar experience to myself, at least 50%, I think. Why do we come back and stay here? Well, because it's a university. It is a real university uh, in the sense of, uh, um, in the sense of uh, the uh, academic uh, freedoms and uh, academic autonomy and uh, everything that uh, Chidam uh, has uh, already uh, uh, conveyed in terms of self-determination, uh, ruling uh, uh, by faculty. It is really very unique. And I really understand Professor Brand when she says that, well, uh, uh, this uh, probably is something that uh, we start to miss in uh, other places where uh, uh, you don't think uh, academic freedom and uh, autonomy would be lacking, but I think that is true. I mean, the universities in the world are going through a tough time and we were an extremely unique place in that sense. And that's why we were coming back. <laughs> we were coming back because this was uh, our own place and we were making a contribution to the society uh, in a very unique um, uh, in a very unique way. The historical uh, coincidences have come together to present us an, with an opportunity to make uh, to to educate the uh, very capable young of the country and make a contribution to the not only to turkey and also to the world i mean i really personally don't want to be anywhere else other than boazici as a uh, as an academic because it really gave everything that that uh, that i would look for to uh, to uh, to be uh, as an academic 
uh, I could do my research. I could teach what I want. I my input has been is taken into uh, consideration very seriously. Uh, we don't have our names at the doors of the uh, of, of of our of, uh, We don't have our titles at the doors of our offices. Rector, well, well, yes, of course we respect him or her, but. I mean, uh, you can tell him or her anything you want. Uh, the chair, well, yes, uh, that's a duty that's done uh, uh, by us, but it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's nothing more than that. And uh, so I, I have been happily uh, teaching, doing research uh, uh, for uh, for this since 1996. And uh, I, uh, I have obviously, like many other of our, uh, my uh, colleagues, have undertaken various administrative duties uh, willingly <laughs> because we want to uh, participate. Uh, 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 and at the time, the university uh, was attacked <laughs> by Erdogan's regime uh, at the beginning of 2021. I had served uh, for uh, the two terms as Dean of uh, Graduate School for Social Sciences, uh, to just to re paraphrase the name a little bit to make it uh, more clear. And I was just eagerly waiting uh, for my replacement to be elected uh, so that I could go back to uh, research and uh, teaching uh, more effectively. Uh, but then we were taken over. I was called as a member of the University Executive Council, and uh, hence I had to just uh, face the fight uh, for uh, over 20 months uh, uh, because they came to actually extinguish everything that we stand for. And this is very much in line with what uh, my friends, colleagues have uh, uh, already summarized. Turkey has become a one party state. Uh, in fact, uh, one man rule uh, is, uh, uh, we can call it very easily uh, with no checks and balances. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, slide to, uh, to uh, authoritarianism, uh, just like it has been observed elsewhere in the world as well, has been very pronounced here. We were just extremely orthogonal to that. <laughs> One man rule, we were not. Uh, and they came here to turn uh, us into that. And we stood up against that. Right from the beginning, they wanted to uh, take over the uh, committees, the University Executive Committee and the Senate are the two bodies that are um, that are at the highest level uh, running the university. And uh, they, they have done everything to, uh, to change that. They have opened new schools so that they can pack new members into these committees. What while doing that, well, if they couldn't get away with what they were doing, and they weren't able to because we stood up against it very fiercely, uh, both in, in, in all committees and at every level that we can, together with students and alumni, but also in committees, because we could not let them uh, undo uh, the things that uh, have made us come here and be part of this uh, uh, experience. and. Um, but uh, slowly by slowly and uh, using brute force, they have packed the committees. They have done everything in their capacity to do that. Of course, the armored police is always waiting at, up at the uh, Etilar gate, uh, backing up all the uh, brute, uh, all, all the um, uh, frontal attacks that they uh, are undertaking. And um, they have, as I said, they have opened new schools to pack new members. They have fired elected deans. So it took them one whole year to change the balance, voting, voting power in the University Executive Council, uh, because that's where all the 
appointment decisions are approved. That's where everything and anything regarding how the university is run uh, takes place. And, uh, but while they were doing that, they went outside the legal means. They did things by brute force, of course, backed by that armored police over there. And of course, Ankara and uh, Erdogan's regime. So this has been a fight. This has been a fight. And uh, let me briefly uh, wrap up with, uh, with the most recent personal uh, uh, experience that I have, um, uh, I, have, uh, I have been going through. It's been 43 years since I entered Boazji campus. And since August 22, I cannot enter uh, the campus because uh, of an ongoing investigation on fabricated charges well, the rector decided to suspend me for three months. And this was coming because of my fierce opposition in various committees over the last 20 months. But more specifically, as the chair of economics department, uh, we were making life extremely difficult together with Mine, uh, the chair of political science in our own schools, uh, School of Economics and Administrative Sciences, where an outside dean has been brought in simply to, to take over the uh, higher uh, decision bodies. And he just uh, was able to function. So uh, together with many is little uh, annoying details as far as they are concerned, the rector got fed up with me and they suspended me from not only the uh, chair of the department, but they are not allowing me enter the campus. Now, this is completely illegal. They, uh, they shut down my uh, email and I cannot also sign e uh, electronics. Uh, I cannot use my electronic signature, et cetera. This is complete and utter terror and... Um, um, a brute uh, use of force, but they can do it. They are they can get away with it because this is in line with what is going on in Turkey right now. At the in the in general, constitution is suspended whenever uh, whenever deemed necessary, and uh, Erdogan just uh, issues decrees. They want to change the university to that. They want the rector be the one man who rules the, and that's, a, and of course, this is with a view to making Boazici a place where what, what Jeng is uh, uh, described, uh, that, that to, to reclaim Boazici, to reclaim Boazici, repossess it. And in fact, when I told one of the appointed deans that what is this? You are trying to conquer. We are we are Turkish. We are not some outside uh, force here. He said, this place has already been conquered in 1453. What are you talking about? We don't need to reconquer it, which I think revealed the fact that they have been seeing Boazici as, as a place where some kind of a revenge was taken for the conquering of Istanbul. And they obviously were not going to uh, let us get away with it. They are, they were repossessing it. This is, this is, this is the picture. And let me stop here. And um, uh, if there will be questions, I will be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Zenginovus. I think the the personal reflection, the for, the personal story, really helps to um, crystallize. I think for a lot of us, just exactly how this was felt on an individual level. So thank you very much for those comments. Um, we'd like to take a few questions from um, the, the, the audience, if we may, um, while we're waiting for questions to come in. There was one um, suggestion that came through in the chat and I wanted to invite our panelists um, to comment briefly on that. And that is, uh, this, you know, this has become a very important issue for, uh, for many people outside of Turkey. Uh, whether they have ties to Turkey, whether they are concerned with academic freedom, university governance in general. And many of us um, feel frustrated by the inability to do more. 
Uh, we we you know, try in our own ways to be supportive. If any of you would want to comment on additional ways that you feel that your colleagues, uh, supporters outside of Turkey can be um, of, of greater support, greater help in your ongoing struggle, uh, I wanted to invite you to um, uh, you know, make those suggestions or comment on that. Anyone? Mine, would you? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm actually going to just, one of the things obviously, and this has been um, asked to us before at the very beginning when all this resistance started, but um, one of the things is, is to sort of, uh, we're a little concerned about the normalization. Uh, and this is, I think, uh, my colleague uh, Saigon is also has has written uh, on this, you know, normalization um, uh, of this particular administration. Because in other international contexts, uh, some uh, universities or university rectors or provosts are not aware of uh, the the kind of damage, institutional damage uh, that's going on in this in this place. And you know, just to give you one, I, I don't know whether I can here, but you know, sort of sustainable development network had some sort of a, a, a meeting in Columbia University a, a few weeks ago. And there you go, you had this huge photo op of Jeffrey Sachs posing with the, two, with the rector and the vice rector. Um, and of course, that's very disappointing to us, right? And, and we had written to Jeffrey Sachs, by the way, saying this is going to happen and please do not give them any opportunity to, to normalize this, right? And they are not representing us. By the way, we forgot to mention that in the process of these 20 months, I think eight months into this, we actually had a, a, a vote after his uh, six months of uh, provost to, uh, to this rector in the first six months, uh, he uh, got 95% of no confidence vote, right? Uh, in other words, the entire faculty voted him up. He, we did not trust him at whatsoever. And we had actually nominated 17 more rector candidates. This is in between the first rector and the second rector to sort of to the, pre to the office of presidency saying, look, these are the people we actually have given confidence. And this and the vice rector, those two people, we are not giving any, uh, that we have, they don't have our confidence for. Uh, of course, that was completely ignored. But the point I'm trying to make is that one of the things, the primary things we're expecting is that do not legitimize them, do not uh, you know, sort of normalize this process because that's that's very hurt, hurtful when we are actually sort of trying to scream here that this is what's being done and this is, this is what these are people who are actually damaging uh, the institution as such. Um, so, so denormalization. How do we have to think this together about how do we delegitimize because they are illegitimate? How do you make sure that their illegitimacy is? is actually um, shared and that information disseminates. I think that's where uh, the real challenge lies because not all institutions, uh, obviously I'm preaching to the converted here, uh, not all institutions are, are aware and uh, know what's going on. Uh, there was, um, does anyone else want to, to comment on that or respond to Professor Edir's? Uh... I think it would be uh, just as an well, I don't know. I wouldn't say it as an aside, but uh, it would be very helpful for uh, those of us outside to have some. Um, I don't know whether guidelines is the right word or not, but some some ideas about how we can both support uh, students from abroad to continue to study in Turkey or to, or, or what sort of what sort of framework would both continue to support exchanges, but, but not contribute to normalizing um, the, these sorts of developments. I think that's something that a lot of us struggle with, not only in the context of Turkey, but in the context of a number of other cases in the region and beyond uh, where there have been these kinds of authoritarian turns, where there've been these terrible clampdowns on uh, academic and other institutions. So I think it would be helpful it's, uh, for, for you as colleagues to, to also inform us better how we can be of help in, in preventing that kind of normalization and fighting back. Um, anyone else in the Yeah, Baki. I just wanna was gonna give a very brief comment that is in, and then ask a question. The, the brief comment actually was something that uh, Professor Atamal Aldem uh, had shared in the first round of uh, Boazidji talks. Uh, he had referred to an late Ottoman era uh, Pasha, Atem Pasha, who apparently 
was uh, writing that we do not need a constitution. This is the time when they're talking about an Ottoman constitution. We need institutions. Uh, we need institution uh, rather than constitution, referring, I guess, to the lack of autonomous institutions uh, that have a certain degree of independence from government in the late 19th century. And I think all of you very uh, well summarized this. Uh, this is the sort of the, the theme. I think Boazici is made a target because after the military and the judiciary and all of the higher education has been taken under the thumb of the president in the process that Professor Eder so kind so well summarized the executive aggrandizement, uh, Boazici University was the only one thing left where uh, it had its own traditions of governance, doing things the way it does and does a good job at it. I think uh, the president of the country is having an issue with that. And of course, the institution having this American past uh, is another thing that makes it more appealing to him to reconquer, to com complete the conquest. So, I mean, it is really, really, really sad it, it, because I was thinking, is there another institution in Turkey that could do a meeting like this, invite you to talk well, most of the academic organizations in Turkey are under the thumb of the government. And so there is very little, there is very little venue to speak. Of course, there is uh, obviously, I shouldn't, I shouldn't uh, say there isn't any, there is, there are uh, labor unions and there are uh, certain uh, political parties that are still resisting, but professional organizations where you would expect people to pick up this position this situation and do a larger resistance are lacking because he took over everything. They, they, everything has been taken over. It's, 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 I mean, tragic, it's tragic. And my question was gonna be a follow-up to this. You showed in one of the images, uh, Jan Oja, uh, the, the, how the voting changed in the, in the Senate and the council. I think that is worth, talking about explaining to the audience how sort of even the uh, representative institutions of the university have been taken all over how these deans, uh, uh, the elected deans were actually fired because that didn't happen. I think there were, I think there were processes in that it, where other people in Ankara also uh, sort of had to play along. And it might be worthwhile to explain a little bit, a little bit of how this was done so that it would also be available in English. Uh, the, the, the sort of minutity of uh, the, the appointments and how the representative institutions have been taken over. If any one of you could go over it in summary fashion, that'd be great. Uh, if I may, I can uh, try to quickly uh, summarize that process because I lived through that, unfortunately, day by day. Uh, I will talk about uh, the University Executive Council. Uh, it started with uh, a count of eight to one. Uh, uh, eight uh, Boazici won uh, the uh, appointees. And uh, then, uh, well, once they uh, sensed that they, the faculty was not going to abide, I was not going to go along with it, well, then they opened two new schools whose deans immediately became uh, the, the member of the uh, executive committee. So uh, that's how they started to pack the council two new members so it became um uh actually it was it started with 61 and then it became 63 uh like that and uh later on one of the deans his term had ended and in uh, in place of him the engineering dean a vice rector was appointed as acting dean and he's still continuing that so, in fact, the vice rector started to have two hats uh, acting dean, and that's a tool they have been using. So that became 
uh, five to four, and they elected one more member later on, uh, uh, who is who was in between uh, the opposition and uh, the other side. So it became five to five. Five to five, it went on for six months, from June of 2021 to the end of 2021. And they were getting extremely anxious. And that's when they opened investigation for all of us, two elected members like myself, and three deans. Three deans, elected deans, were very quickly dismissed by the Higher Education Council, YÖK, in a month or so. So it became eight to two, starting January 19, 2022. Because the YÖK, uh, the Higher Education Council, got rid of uh, the deans very quickly, the investigation that they started on me and my other elected uh, colleague never went through it was just it has never ended it's been seven months since uh, we defended ourselves no decision whatsoever so everything has been geared towards overtaking the um, uh, uh, higher decision bodies senate maybe Chidam uh, may want to uh, uh, explain uh, was also overtaken in a similar manner uh, yeah. I just want, to, just want to reiterate something. I think when people may not be aware of it here in the audience, the, the, the who are in the United States, the Higher Education Council in Ankara that sort of confirmed or, or that fired the deans that had the authority to do that, they are also actually professors, right? Uh, uh, the people who make those decisions are actually university professors themselves. So it's yes. important perhaps to underline this to to draw the home the point that in Turkey, most professors in most universities feel uh, they just have to do the bidding of whatever the political power wants to do. Uh, the deans that actually were fired from their position of dean, there was not a single justifiable reason. And yet a number of professors sitting in Ankara at a higher education council um, that is actually chaired by a colleague, an Ottoman economic historian, uh, that those professors were the ones who did this. And I, I, it is very sad. It is very, very sad to realize this. Anyway, Chidam, please go ahead. Okay. Yeah, let me just <laughs> add, to, add to what you now said from the point of view of the Senate. The Senate is the, the, the higher council in the university where all academic decisions are taken. So anything that uh, that ranges from, uh, you know, the departmental curricula to the institution of a new department, a new school, etc., uh, goes through the uh, the university senate. And again, it was from the very beginning, uh, it was very evident that this was part of the game, you know taking control of these two higher councils, the, the executive council and uh, and the Senate. Unal, uh, I, I, I think he did not uh, mention it here. He had, he, he did mention, but not the end of the story. Maybe he was elected as the, uh, the director of our social scientists uh, institute, which basically oversees all graduate uh, programs uh, in social sciences and humanities in the university, he was not uh, uh, appointed. Uh, and this was very early. This was, I think, you know, February uh, after this, you know, this first rector, Melih Bulu, had been elected. And we saw, uh, we saw step by step Basically, uh, seizing of uh, of the uh, of the Senate, um, people were parachuted in as you know, institute directors, as faculty representatives of you know non-existent faculties such as the law school or the this, this school of of communication. Um, the curriculum of uh, of of the law school was. Uh, passed in such a way that three people in the Senate used eight votes. 
as deputy something or other. So the, I want to bring this to the issue of, of, of legitimacy and, and, and normalization that, that, uh, that Mina mentioned and that we were talking about, you know, about what to do and et cetera. The issue of legality is, is, is something uh, that, you know, we have forced this uh, new appointed administration to abide by the university laws. And that is, that was part of our resistance. That is, you know, partly where we succeeded for almost a year to stop these, you know, imposed uh, structures being kind of uh, implanted in the uh, in the university, basically, to change its, its structure, to change its governance, uh, etc. But this 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 issue of legitimacy is is and remains something that you know. This vote has to be taken, uh, and people have to be parachuted in. Uh, it's a farce. Uh, it's a complete farce, but then it has to be enacted. Um, legitimacy has to be acquired within the university, within the Turkish public, but also internationally. And internationally is perhaps what concerns this, this public, this audience here. So um, I would ask, I think we would all ask uh, our colleagues here not to allow this kind of legitimization to take place uh, through, through photo ops or through, uh, you know, invitations, through uh, associations of different kinds, etc. You know, I cannot, you know, detail everything here, but legitimacy is an issue, an important issue. It remains an important issue and, uh, you know, uh, uh this is this is really a a, a a rule that has been imposed on us and we should do everything not to not to legitimize it. Thank you. Um, Professor Chandan. Uh, thank you. I also would like to add uh, to what Chidan just said is that international solidarity campaigns, I think is also important, especially for faculty who've been dismissed, or um, who've been prevented from teaching. Uh, so far, to give you a, a summary again, uh, we have two full-time uh, uh, faculty people who have been dismissed uh, unlawfully and unjustly, uh, one being myself and the other one, uh, Dr. Mohan Ravichandran. And we have numerous uh, part-time uh, retired and emeritus faculty who have been prevented from teaching. And we also have two full-time faculty, one being UNAL uh, and the other one being uh, uh, Tuna, Tuna to Professor Tuna Tuju, uh, who have been prevented from entering uh, the campus. And I think it's very important uh, to show solidarity in such situations, international solidarity, uh, so that uh, not only these people feel that they're not alone, but uh, that they are part of this um, international academic community uh, who are uh, not accepting uh, the kind of treatment that they are getting uh, in this uh, situation. Thank you. Thank you, um, Professor Kurla. And actually, there is one question um, in the chat as to why there haven't been broader dismissals at Boazici. Um, I wonder if perhaps in one of you, a couple of people with their hands up could could uh, address that as well. But now, Professor Kurla. Uh, perhaps that's partly uh, the question, the answer to your question. But uh, in speaking of this controlling the Senate and 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 the Executive Council, perhaps this in a, in a power grab game. That is what is what is expected of the people of who who want to to grab the power. But what is even more worrying. Than these double voting and and then completely getting taking over the Senate and and, and Executive Council is that these uh, recent developments in the last one and a half months or or two months or so is these more uh, personal uh, decisions out of personal 
uh, spite or vengeance, whatever. I was uh, up from, uh, I was, for about 20 months, I was the director of uh, Atatürk Institute for Modern Turkish History. So this was a, an in, uh, graduate institute. Uh, so I've been also a member of the Senate in, in that capacity uh, from the beginning of the appointment of the rector. Uh, and as you know, as uh, Unologe and others had pointed out, that these Senate and Executive Council, uh, at least uh, since the beginning of this uh, year, with the dismissal, summer dis uh, dismissal of the of the deans and the uh, uh, members of the two executive uh, members of the of the councils elected by the Senate, uh, the all the Senate uh, and uh, Executive Council were overwhelmingly in favor of the. Of the, of the administration and his, you know, appointed deans and whatnot. Uh, so, uh, but while actually they don't need to make a maneuver to uh, get uh, control of the Senate and Executive Council, for instance, they dismissed me uh, from my position, some of the dismissal, although I have uh, still nearly one and a half year left in my position because I was appointed by the rector, previous rector for three years, I was summarily dismissed from my position in, in early, early August. So this was actually, it is from a strictly institutional base, this is doesn't make much sense because my presence in the Senate uh, or absence in the Senate does not really make any difference in terms of the voting composition. But it was probably, uh, it was somewhat, uh, perhaps it was uh, driven largely by uh, my past uh, performance uh, uh, and opposition uh, that, that I had uh, displayed uh, over these uh, 20 months. And this is being happening, for instance, in, in all the other uh, personal the spiteful decisions that John John Dunn's who legally actually is going to talk about uh, perhaps now, uh, but I don't want to uh, step again. He was dismissed again uh, from his position. Uh, other faculty members, Unal Hoca, what has been happening, or uh, Tuna Tuju, uh, uh, faculty member from a computer engineering department. This is a, a whole another story that should uh, that takes a lot of time. And um, a, a number of retired members, uh, faculty members who are teaching for basically for nickels and dimes, basically. I mean, there's no monetary compensation and who would like to continue to teach after they retired? And now those who are vocal and those who participate in the vigils, those uh, emeritus, those retired members of the faculty, some of them are in the audience, they are prevented from uh, uh, teaching uh, at the university while those who do not really speak up or somewhat more, uh, you know, just uh, be careful are allowed to teach. Uh, and they openly say that this is the this is the only sanction that we were able to do to the retired faculty. They even announced this as, as, as a, in, a, in a public announcement. So that's what I'm saying. This is we in the last two months have entered into a different phase where actually not only these uh, power grab games to control the Senate and Executive Council, but decisions are becoming more and more targeted, individualized and largely driven by these uh, personal uh, vendettas and others. And this is even more worrying. Uh, I mean, if if those other power grab games uh, were not enough. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor uh, Zengi Novos. Uh, yes. Um, to add on to what uh, Jengiz was saying, uh, first about uh, legitimization. Now, in fact, within Turkey, I think we, our resistance have completely and utterly delegitimized delegitimized what the government has been trying to do. That's completely the case. I am 100% certain of that. They cannot find any qualified people to come and become de as uh, work as deans or as faculty members at Boazici. That was That has been one of the reasons why it has taken them so long to... Uh, to uh, fire us completely. And the second one was because of our prestige and resistance and also 
public support uh, 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 nationally and internationally, well, they weren't able to do it. Now, why are they doing it now? Well, time is running out, they feel. Uh, there are elections next year and uh, they have to do something. Uh, well, who? They are responsible to Ankara, you see, and they have been instructed to, to do things quickly now. So they have entered the new phase. Now, the, the, uh, some of the reasons why they are taking these actions against uh, me or other uh, full-time faculty members, well, that's, that's, that's a threat. That's a threat to have all other faculty members. And in fact, I think the aim is to move in that direction. Uh, now, we have opened many, many lawsuits. So let me quickly answer a question um, on the chat as well. We have opened many lawsuits. Do we have hope? Well, yes and no. No right now because, well, in a, a parties in a one party state, well, the uh, courts are also uh, reflect reflecting that fact. However, they are not 100% <laughs> overtaken. And in fact, with the promise uh, of a change, well, with the hope of a change after the election, even the courts have started wavering. So in the long run, I think we are gonna win all those uh, court cases if Turkey takes a more democratic turn. I am not, uh, I am actually quite hopeful and I, I, uh, I think uh, we have uh, achieved a lot. Uh, so it's not only a defeat story, I don't think so. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, we, may, uh, we may be dead, we may be killed in the short run. We have already won the medium and the long run, I, I think. Uh, and we definitely need a lot of help uh, in terms of legitimization, delegitimization and support from both national and international academic scholars. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Professor Eder? I was just going to add maybe a, a new round of uh, letters to associations because that's, um, that's always, you know, sort of MESA has done that and that's been uh, incredibly helpful, I think. Uh, but, uh, you know, something along those lines where, uh, you know, sort of because this is, this is where uh, they're really trying to, um, you know, capitalize on the existing international recognition and prestige. And when they are kind of uh, then reputed on those fronts, uh, I think that would be an incredible, uh, incredible um, sort of damage to their own reputation, because that's not how you're supposed to be running this institution. Um, and that kind of acknowledgement or kind of a, a reprimand or kind of a criticism that will come from these kind of associations would, I think, be very, uh, very important, and I, you know, we've done this on, on various occasions, and, and Unal already had a, an international campaign is going on for Unal's dismissal as well, which I think is also very important. But that that kind of sort of, um, uh, you know, without obviously, I can see the dilemma, you know, because the, the prestige of the institution itself is becomes uh, a questionable. But at this point in time, uh, one venue of delegitimizing is to expose the kind of damage that they're. Uh, in, in inflicting on the institution and then basically calling them off or just sort of unmasking them in some ways. And, and I think the institutions and associations can play a very important role in unmasking this. And that would be my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a very helpful suggestion. So you, in, in, in essence, for depending on what our, our disciplinary engagements happen to be, that, that people can all try and work through their respective um, professional associations and academic associations to try and get them to issue letters. So that's a, a very, you know, a very sort of concrete way I think that all of us can, can act. Just one brief um, comment uh, in response to one of the questions uh, in the chat. Uh, 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 Renee Warringer was asking about uh, sponsoring scholars through the Scholars at Risk program. Um, it, it has its advantages and its, its disadvantages. As she mentions, there's, uh, they, they were willing to sponsor a scholar. The scholar wasn't able to leave Turkey. There are scholars in the States who came or who were, were able to be an integrated into um, that program, but it, the, it's not a program that's open-ended. It only lasts for a couple of years. And in a situation of um, not, I mean, obviously in Turkey, we're talking about this, uh, you know, descent into greater authoritarianism In other countries where people are fleeing wars, it's rare that these situations are resolved within a year or two. So one has to think about 
what this person's longer term future is. And that's not to say that that help for a year or two is insignificant, but it's to say that there are, there are real serious issues of integration into intellectual communities. Uh, and also what happens to this person once the year or two of fellowship uh, sponsored largely by scholars at risk runs out. So if one can get a university to commit uh, sort of in addition to or beyond what a scholar at risk program is, is able to put into something that that is a, a, a much it's a much more a, lo a better longer medium term solution for scholars who are, are, are outside of Turkey and who have come in um, as a part of these programs. Anyway, sorry to, to take so much time on that, but I thought it was important to mention. Um, Professor Kafez Yolo. Okay, very quickly, we seem to be taking a long time, but something that we uh, we did not really go into uh, again uh, happening basically uh, through these past few months is the new uh, move towards recruitment. So this is in line with, uh, you know, what Genghis talked about regarding this issue of repossession or what I, I, I hear as being termed as actually uh, a conquest, the notion that Kwasic is a kind of a closed in community. And so we have to kind of put in there people that are closer basically to the government, closer to the whatever the political stances of the ruling uh, uh, party. Now, uh, now there is, there have been numerous, um, uh, numerous, um, uh, 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 announcements made for new positions uh, in, in several uh, uh, departments. Some of these are very, very, obviously pointing to uh, to particular people some are more general etc uh, but this is also something maybe to just to know about and keep in mind also in terms of what you know professional professional associations can do what departments can do what 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 colleagues as uh, as um, uh, as communities uh, can do in that this university had a a very well established established uh, merit-based system of recruitment, uh, not closed in any way, not closed ideologically or politically, uh, uh, and, and people, uh, people have been recruited completely based on their academic merits. So, um, uh, so this should be known. And it should also be known that uh, that you know these uh, these new announcements for for recruitment of new faculty come from a certain position to to fill in fill in you know spots within uh, the university and uh, and to do this as part of this project to transform the institution. All right, uh, we have uh, an additional um, question from uh, Heretin Yuchesoy. Yes, um, you know, I, he, as someone who has been um, visiting Boazic University and uh, interacting with the faculty and the students in the last 10 years or so, as a representative of my institution, I wanna make sure that uh, we discuss also a little bit uh, with the colleagues uh, the following points. I perfectly understand that, you know, I mean, uh, to avoid uh, legitimizing the status quo by, you know, I mean, uh, uh, giving uh, photos with the current administration, but there is a danger, especially outside Turkey in the context, for example, of my institution, if we do not, keep uh, the relationships alive, uh, there is a risk of falling under the radar of the attention of the students and the faculty and the administration in my own institutions. So my, uh, and once, you know, once that kind of really risk presents itself, it is very difficult to come back and reinstitute the relationships that we, have had before. So my question to my colleagues at Boazic University, and you know, some of you, uh, you probably already know, we discussed this personally uh, with you. What do you think would be the best way 
one, to maintain relationship, two, not to give a kind of the, the kind of legitimacy the current administration wants. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so at this point, I'm going to hand it off to uh, Baki. I think he's going to, uh, so he'll he'll chair and I think perhaps continue with the discussion, um, but I'm afraid I have to leave. So I want to thank everyone again. Uh, this has been a, a, just a, a fantastic set of presentations and a very enriching discussion. Uh, and again, please, as your colleagues from outside of Turkey, um, just continue to let us know what we can do to be of support. Thank you and best wishes. Thank, thank you, you Laurie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Hayrettin yes. asked a question. I'm going okay. to leave. Maybe the I can response. shortly uh, propose an answer uh, to to Hayrettin, as uh, also he has. We are we are grateful to him for teaching at our department uh, uh, too. Uh, we continue to pursue departmental uh, links and collaborations. Um, I personally am very um, reluctant to enter into anything that would go through the university administration, that would need the approval of the university administration. Um, apart from that, uh, apart from that, our departments, you know, several collaborations are are continuing, are uh, are flourishing. We are looking uh, into uh, into new collaborations and uh, and so on. I understand your worry and, and I understand your concern. And there is there isn't a kind of a yes or no answer to this, perhaps, you know, to, to judge, you know, where something does go through the rectorate or does not. But at least to my mind, this is this is one way of uh, of 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 gauging this. Mine Hojan Buyrun. Please. I'm just going to add, you know, sort of engage with us, uh, you know, sort of because we're not going anywhere. Uh, I mean, and we don't plan to go anywhere. I don't want to be part of a scholars at risk program. I don't. I want them to be at the scholars at risk program. Frankly, I mean, literally, the idea here is is to is to continue to um, to uh, to claim the place, to claim the university, and 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 that doesn't mean there's not going to be any international collaboration. Of course, um, uh, you know, sort of. At, but it, that's going to be our claim, and uh, you know there were uh, there were colleagues, for example, that have uh, remained, you know, sort of received various international awards, and they have actually dedicated that international award to us, to our resistance, right? So, you know, so 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 long as you keep on engaging, yes, there will be certain funds that will have to go be be processed bureaucratically through the institution and through the administration. I understand that, but you know, so in terms of human capital, we're still predominantly here. And, um, and, and you know, there were some of the concerns about the sort of the keep, keeping the quality of the faculty. Obviously, that's not going to be easy. That's why they go an incredible length of trying to create investigation reports against Unal Hoja and, you know, sort of try to manufacture things so that they can able to keep them, you know, to keep those, those uh, opposing voices away. But that's not going to be easy. And we're not going to be making, making that easy for them. So one way of really doing this is is um is really engaging with as many faculty as possible keep those uh, collaborations going uh, keep these exchange programs for our students going but and the process though keep on writing to the administration that we're seeing your game we're not recognizing you we're just simply acknowledging the faculty i think that's just one way of 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 solving or at least navigating through this dilemma. But I see this dilemma, but it, it can be navigated is what I'm trying to get at. Thank you. Uh, Mine Hocam, teşekkürler. Thank you. I just want to read something that was dropped in the chat. Everybody in the program in Zoom actually is able to see it, but we are also recording for the video, so I'm going to just read it out. Uh, there is a web page where you can follow uh, what is going on at Boazici. Uh, the content is provided by Boazici University faculty, and that web page's address is University Bogazici. Uh, so university is in English, university, and then B-O-G-A-Z-I-C-I -I dot wordpress 
dot com. So it's Turkish, but with some content translated into English. And you can always use Google Translate if you are really curious, or we, we will also try to see what we can do about bettering the translation options. I have a question myself as a historian. Um, the, some of the damage that happened in recent times happened to things uh, that are of concern to historians. Uh, the, already Jing is mentioned the Institute, Atatürk Institute of Modern Turkish History, uh, which was crucial in uh, basically training late Ottoman, uh, early modern Turkish historians, also in other fields, political scientists, sociologists who took classes from there, many graduate students who came to United States uh, and got their degrees here, PhDs, actually were trained over there for their masters. So this institution, uh, as Genghis mentioned, the director was taken off, uh, Genghis, uh, with, with summarily, but that's not the only thing that happened. I also heard there was something about the art university archive. I also heard something about a, a Byzantine studies center. So if uh, our colleagues here could tell us a little bit about particular places i'm also while i don't study film I, I i love watching movies and i believe something happened at the film center too so these are all things uh, that uh, deserve mentioning if you could take turns a few minutes each and telling us a little bit about these things so that it would be recorded on video that'd be great Well, in the in the order that you ask, perhaps I can say a few words about the uh, Ar archives and documentation center. Uh, this was uh, archives and documentation center uh, been established uh, in, in 2015 as an as an official place, and it was it not only housed uh, the, a copy of the Robert College archives, whose originals uh, were deposited at Columbia University's Rare Books uh, Library. And uh, but it also had a number of private archives that had been uh, either donated to the university at different times or had been carried over by former faculty members who had been you know spread across the university. So what we did in 2015 was to uh, with with colleagues uh, and, and friends is to we also uh, acquired some financial uh, funding uh, from the Istanbul uh, Development Institute and uh, we, we started cataloging and digitizing and uh, publicly making available to these uh, private archives uh, which are uh, in, in various fields, uh, from literature, Turkish literature, to archaeology and, 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 and science, and, and so on and so forth. And we were operating, actually, in, in a particular building, perhaps Chidan will talk about it. It's a two-and-a-half-story building, a historic building in, uh, in, in South Campus. In the ground floor was the Byzantine uh, Research Center. In the in the second floor of this archives and documentation center, and then there was another center at the top floor. What happened is that they uh, decided to vacate all the uh, centers in that particular building with the ostensible purpose of turning that particular building into into residence for I don't know whom uh, is the intended person. Uh, Byzantine center has been moved, but in uh, our archive and documentation center has been shut down. Okay. Uh, and they said that the whole, uh, uh, you know, administrative body, which I was serving as the coordinator from the beginning, was dissolved, and the uh, the, the 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 activities of the center uh, were, were being moved to the library. Granted, uh, the, even before this administration, that the archives are, and documentation center was suffering from financial difficulties, lack of personnel, and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, we were still even in in uh, in these difficult and dire circumstances even before uh, this uh, this this new term, this uh, new uh, new rector. Uh, we were still had a certain visibility. We had a certain visibility, and we were still able to acquire uh, donations. Uh, like most recently, we had 
uh, the, the donations of the Yakub Kadri Karasmanoğlu archives, which is a huge archive, is, is, is a, a prominent uh, novelist and politicians and a, a former uh, diplomat and, and, and whatnot, and along with all the uh, personal uh, belongings and whatnot. Well, in, in perhaps it is in a, not the end of the world to move the uh, activities of the uh, of this uh, archives and documentation center to the library because after all in many places in the world this kind of archival work is being done under uh, the supervision of the library but this was the uh, uh, this was designed as a separate center simply because that it actually uh, the uh, we were able to acquire these private archives by building brick by brick, uh, you know, just trust individuals, because after all, they are, these private archives are being handed to you based on confidence, institutional uh, continuity and personal relationship. And the second thing is that uh, because of the nature of the employment in public universities, uh, the university libraries, especially the public university libraries, usually lack the qualified personnel uh, or the philological skills to be able to process these documents. Uh, so that's why we had these, you know, this uh, a, a separate center. So what is happening from this? I mean, there are two things. Perhaps, I mean, I hope, I, 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 I have no uh, negative things for my colleagues in, in the library. I'm sure that they are going to take over these uh, and take care of this. But I mean, the, the, the thing is that is this, are they going to be able to devote uh, time and energy to build that trust? Secondly, what is going to, are they going to be able to find enough staff to be able to process these documents and to make them available to researchers? And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, what are we going to say to the future donors? If they know that institutions don't, do not matter because they trusted to the archives and documentation centers, when they were handing over all of these uh, private documents, uh, but with a, with an executive council decision, it was dismantled just just like that. And uh, how are we going to ask for more donations? Because all of these private archives actually relies on the institutional continuity of these. I'm not even mentioning the haphazard and the, uh, and the insensitive way in which that this was closed because. Let me just uh, wrap up by saying this. Uh, I was not notified. I was notified, uh, just like I was notified by Samuel Dismiss from the Atatürk Institute uh, directorship, that I, I received a, a, a general thing that this uh, archives and documentation center was, was shut down and then the, the coordination council was dissolved. And I, I, I received a phone call uh, to uh, hand over the keys to the center in the next two hours or so. And I said, I was, I'm not on campus, I, I'm not going to be able to. And I was given the deadline of turning the keys over at 9 a.m. in the morning without even giving enough time to transfer the, all those documents, all the intricacies, all the network and every you know, know-how and everything that we have accumulated over the seven years to the people from the library who were equally ignorant of these process. They were not cognizant of what was going on. So that is the, that is the, I mean, these institutions are being dismantled, not only with these decisions, but also these, you know, uh, the, the haphazard way in which uh, uh, everything is taking place. I think I'm, I'm afraid that this is the way things are being done uh, in the university nowadays. And archives and documentation is just one example of it. We will see. I, I hope they uh, take care of these documents because we really invested uh, and in, in trying to build these archives over the years, and uh, this is what uh, this was. Uh, an, an, I mean, I mean, one was not in my case a, a, a expecting a, a thank you from them, uh, but but at least that this was uh, this was not the way it, it should have been done, handled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone would like okay. to say a few things about the either Byzantine Studies Center or, oh yes, yeah. Chidan, please. Let me say a few things on the Byzantine Center. First, let me say that, you, you know, I, uh, maybe 
it's difficult to really express my 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 uh my shock i was there the day uh Cengiz was expected to hand his keys and i also uh saw the byzantine center being uh, uh evacuated and this this you know the outright vicious manner in which this project to control uh proceeds i think is is you know made made very very visible in this in this uh, in this last act and also in the way that the library uh, uh staff was you know also in shock and completely not in the know of you know the value of the documents that they were that were being passed on to them uh and uh and what would they would be doing with them so uh, so I I had the privilege of kind of witnessing the the two moves at once. Um, the Byzantine Center, um, the Center for Byzantine Studies at Boazici was uh, founded in 2015, um, and it very quickly uh, became home to numerous both local and international projects and events, uh, both academic for the academic uh, uh, community, but also uh, also for the public, uh, housing an important specialized library, housing study spaces, which are very, you know, dear uh, in the, you know, uh, given the limitations of the uh, of the Boazici uh, uh, campus. It supported uh, many graduate and postgraduate resources through a Mellon funding, a sizable Mellon funding that they had and could, uh, you know, um, uh, continue uh, this kind of uh, support. All of this within this really short stretch of time uh, from its foundation, uh, it became this really important hub for the expansion of Byzantine studies in, uh, in Turkey. And uh, I will not go into this now. Uh, we have already taken very long, but Byzantine studies in Turkey is already a difficult and loaded uh, issue in itself. So, uh, so, uh, it's, it was a success story, uh, very much led by Nevrani Cipolu and uh, and um, uh, and uh, and her colleagues uh, at uh, at the department, uh, and uh, and the center well, it was not demolished. The center was moved to two small rooms uh, in a different campus of the university. These two small rooms are not space enough for storage, uh, let alone research and work and you know workshops and conferences and summer schools and uh, and so on so in practice the activities of this uh, this center at the present have been uh, have been stopped and this a very very strange choice has been made between uh, the functioning of an international research center and this very valuable archive that Genghis uh, was heading and housing to be provided to uh, a member of staff there's a there's also a huge irony in this that i i think i have to mention in uh, uh, a few years ago the council of higher education in turkey created a new rating system for the universities and created the status of research universities araştırma üniversiteleri and Boazici, alongside two others, uh, Middle East Technical University and Istanbul Technical University, were, were ranked as the three forthcoming research universities in Turkey. So, um, you know, closing down research centers, other centers have been moved. The Center for, for Mathematical Sciences, the, the Center for Peace Education, the Center for uh, Research in Social Policy, all these places have been kind of overnight moved through nocturnal operations to places that they can hardly operate in. Uh, and uh, and this, is, uh, this is the notion of the research university that we have been uh, kind of 
observing and uh, and living through the, the nocturnal part also i think should be emphasized uh, it, it, it's yeah the, when these things happen at night it, it is it is it is very scary it is so so scary you receive notice of a new president in the morning you receive notice about turning in the keys 9 a.m uh john john would you like to say a few things about yes. the Chilton center yes definitely uh thank you um one one thing that's really appalling also is that in terms of um uh you know in the, in the manner uh, these uh, research uh, centers are um kind of taken over is the way the way it's done you know you mentioned the nocturnal <laughs> aspect of it but it's also very disrespectful i mean uh, various faculty have been putting all this effort into uh, uh, the the establishment and the uh, and the uh, activities of these uh, research centers and 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 it's it's so disrespectful uh, the way uh, they're they're doing this uh, just like the way you mentioned how uh, you know supposedly these uh, professors at the council on higher education are making these decisions uh, not only it's unethical but it's also extremely disrespectful um, so uh, having said that uh, let me talk about the film center a little bit uh, rather than the unlawful takeover of the film center at Boazic University uh, to give you some historical context the film center was established and started functioning at the end of uh, the year 2000 and it was um, as a result of a endowed uh, gift by uh, Mitat Alam, uh, who uh, is an alumni of uh, Robert College, uh, you know, what, the institution before uh, Boazici. He was a graduate of uh, 1968 graduate of Robert College, and he donated uh, over five hundred thousand dollars, half a million dollars, to establish a film center. Uh, on campus, uh, and this was such a opportunity for the institution uh, to have uh, this kind of a donation and have a film center for the students. Uh, we do not have a film department at Boazici, or, or we didn't used to have, now they say that there is one, but um, uh, we didn't have a film department at Boazici, uh, but there was a film studies, uh, there is a film studies uh, certificate program where students who are interested in film studies can take courses but uh, the film center was a uh, very unique complement uh, to to, uh, to this particular program because here uh, the center was yes it was uh, established as a, as a as an endowed uh, as a result of an endowed gift but it was established as a center uh, for the students uh, and almost by the students um, and it 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 was unique in that sense uh, with its projects of um, the oral history uh, project on history of Turkish cinema uh, supporting uh, student publications having ongoing film uh, film screening programs uh, so it was really unique and successful center um, and um, once uh, this appointed administration uh was uh, given the task of establishing a school of uh, communications they started this <laughs> new appointed people started visiting the center for the first time in their lives uh, checking out the space because they needed a space to uh, establish their school of communications right so <laughs> apparently they visited the center looking for the tv studios because that's the that's the vision that they had that this film student, this film center would have uh, studios, studios uh, that they can take over and turn into, um, you know, um, um, uh, some um, um, parts of the, uh, the, the 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 film department, for example. Um, so what they did is. Uh, all of a sudden, overnight, uh, they they dismissed uh, two of the administrators uh, of the uh, film center. Uh, one was the general coordinator and the other one was the 
coordinator for projects. Uh, so one morning they, you know, went to work and they weren't allowed onto the campus, similar to what some of us are uh, experiencing. So right now uh, they're taking over the film center and, and, and saying that now that we have a, a school of communications uh, and within the school of communications, we have a film department, uh, the film center will be part of the film department. Uh, and this is done without any consultation of um, the administrators of the film department and, and without any other bodies uh, of, of, um, of uh, the university. Now, I need to mention that the way, uh, besides the endowed gift, the film center used to be um, uh, administrator administrator uh, as as a uh, within as as a coordination of three bodies the university administration university foundation bivac and also um mitat alam educational foundation the mitat alam educational foundation is the body that really owns the film center because uh, after Mithat Alam passed away, uh, the foundation was acting on his uh, behalf. So legally, uh, the Mithat Alam Foundation, uh, Education Foundation, uh, is in charge of um, uh, appointing the general coordinator of the film center. And they are in charge of also dismissing if they need if they need to do that dismissing the coordinator of the film center so what's been done so far is completely illegal uh it's against the endowed gift and the and the contract that was signed as part of this endowed gift uh, so again uh, to uh, summarize it there's this is the unlawful takeover uh, of a very well functioning unique film center uh, at our university uh, because they have the need to in a way um, uh, build up this school of communications and the film department and so far there's only one faculty who, who has been appointed uh, uh, to the uh, school of uh, communications thank you thank you so much Jano Jam. and let me amplify two points here for our american audience one uh, institution Turkish universities do not very often have uh, sort of named buildings or centers after people. This is something that is very common to American campuses. We are very uh, much working with fundraising and we have uh, our donors who are former alumni uh, who give money to institutions, et cetera. But uh, this is not a very highly developed thing in Turkey, even in private universities, it's not very common that you see somebody giving money to a campus to do something. And in this particular case, this is a fairly large gift. So it, 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 that I think should be emphasized. And another point that I cannot uh, help but see is this is done by an administration that is so proud of being the uh, inheritor of a, a civilization built on uh, waqfs uh, built on foundations. They are so proud of this. They keep saying it, and here they are uh, undoing an endowment. Uh, it, it is. It is. It is very. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, they, uh, we have done more than two and a half hours, but there are still topics to discuss. And one of the better things, perhaps, is there was a positive development in, because, as uh, Unaloja mentioned, sometimes courts actually make decisions that are unexpected. And uh, I, 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 as far as I could follow, one such thing happened in your case, Jano Jam. Uh, it, it, could you share that with us too? And then in the meantime, if there are any last minute questions, please raise your hands now because we should be wrapping up. But I also wanted to hear a little bit about the better uh, decisions that courts make these days. Please, Jano Jam, we run. Sure, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Um, yeah, so I was dismissed on the 16th of uh, July uh, 2021, last year, and uh, there were a couple of um, 
reasons that they uh, mentioned uh, for my dismissal. And one of them was um, a disciplinary investigation that they said that they had opened uh, because I had shared something on Twitter. Um, uh, and that that was uh, supposedly one of the reasons why I was dismissed. But, uh, you know, uh, they can't use this as a reason to dismiss a faculty person because they need to go through the process of the investigation. Uh, so without even uh, going through the process, they showed this as, as one of the reasons why they were dismissing me. And the other thing had to do with the number of hours that I was teaching. And they said that, you know, uh, I wasn't teaching enough hours, and that's really ridiculous as well, because, you know, uh, I teach whatever my department asks. I, you know, I teach for for whatever many hours that my department asks me to teach, <laughs> and that's not some uh, decision that I make on my own. You know, I can't say, oh, I'm just going to teach for an hour this 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 semester, or I'm going to go on sabbatical because I feel like it or whatever. I mean, obviously, this is a departmental decision that also goes through the uh, the school's board, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, they, you know, in 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 the in the uh, letter dismissal letter, they show this as a reason uh, for my dismissal, as if I it, you know, it was up to me to teach whatever many hours. Anyway, the other one was. Um, uh what was it um um there was another uh reason that they uh anyway i don't remember that one but that these were all <laughs> unfounded bogus uh, reasons that they were uh mentioning uh and of course i took it to court right away uh it was July, so there was this uh, um, legal recess period, and I had, so 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 the court waited until uh, September to look at the case, and then uh, he, as a part of uh, the 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 um, uh, as as part of our demands, uh, we were asking for a stay of execution uh, ordered by the court, so that uh, since this if the court decides that this is a, a, an, an unlawful uh, um, decision by the administration of the university, uh, then there would be all these losses. Uh, you know, I would, you know, I would be losing my salary. I would be uh, losing my chance to teach, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we demanded a, a stay of execution order, uh, but it took the court uh, many, 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 many months to uh, rule on this. Uh, first, they ruled that there was no need for a stay of execution. Then we appealed this decision, and the higher court, instead of uh, saying, uh, in, in, instead of uh, lifting that uh, decision that was not in our favor, the court, uh, in a way, uh, threw the ball outside of the court, so to speak, and 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 said uh, to the lower court. Um, that they should, uh, you know, ask the university administration for for more documentation, uh, and that lasted for some other months, uh, and then the lower court once again denied uh, this uh, uh, stay of execution, and we took it to the higher court again, and then finally the higher court had to decide uh, that there that this uh, there there needs to be a stay of execution, and then. Um, I, I was then allowed back onto the campus, as I said before, uh, in March. And on 4th of April, uh, uh, they did the necessary paperwork so that I was um, uh, reinstated again, pending the court's final decision, though. Uh, so, and then the court's final decision came uh, at the end of May uh, this year. And I was then, uh, my reinstatement was um, um, finalized. Uh, but then, uh, what uh, during this time, um, because the court has asked the school administration about the disciplinary action that they were taking, uh, six months, uh, almost five months after my uh, dismissal, the university administration sent me a letter for the first time regarding uh, the uh, investigation that they were starting. Uh, 
five and a half months after my dismissal, they're talking about starting this investigation that they mentioned. And as a result of this investigation, uh, they found me guilty of um, uh, being disrespectful uh, to my superiors by uh, retweeting um, uh, and clearly quoting a news item that happened on a news portal. Uh, so they they used the words of somebody else that were, that was quoted in the news portal as if they were those were my words, and they said that uh, I was. Uh, 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 being respect, res, disrespectful, uh, respectful to my superiors, and this wording of superior is obviously highly problematic. <laughs> At the university, we do not have superiors; uh, we are kind of uh, equals, you know, within the academic community. Anyhow, uh, so now they had this disciplinary um, uh, sanction in their hands, and they used it again this time to dismiss me again um so as of <laughs> july 16th of this year i'm dismissed for the second time uh with similar um uh reasons that they're giving uh, the giving uh and uh, the difference this year was that uh they notified me of my dismissal on the 9th of august and in the letter that I received, it said, you have been dismissed by, uh, uh, effective 16th of July. So they're inform informing me 24 days after my dismissal that I had been dismissed. So this is, uh, again, I think completely illegal. So now I have two new court cases. Uh, one is uh, to... Um, uh, appeal my uh, appeal the the, um, the 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 disciplinary sanction that uh, they they have given me, and the other one is uh, for my dismissal. So I have new court cases pending, and meanwhile uh, the school administration has appealed to the uh, decision of the uh, fourth the first uh, court case that I had been uh, as a result of which I had been reinstated. So now I have three court cases pending, uh, one for my, uh, because the school administration appealed to last year's dismissal, and I have two new court cases uh, uh, regard, regarding this year's uh, dismissal. So uh, it was a big gain, obviously, for us that as a result of the last year's um, a court decision for say of execution that I was reinstated. I returned to the campus and we celebrated that together. Uh, but now uh, we're back to uh, a similar situation that we that I had gone through uh, last year. So I don't know how long it's going to take for the court to uh, make a decision right now, and I don't know uh, when I'll be able to uh, enter the campus again. Um, the um, uh, registration period has started yesterday and uh, I'm not able to open the courses officially uh, and th these courses have been planned by the department that I would teach these two courses this semester. So uh, everything is kind of up in the air and, and I'm waiting for the court to make a decision. Thank you. I, I, I don't know what to say. As, as, as Chidem already said, it's a farce, the whole thing. But of course, it's something that happens to you and you have to live the consequences and the students and the whole campus. I, I, so it's, 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 I don't know what to say. It's very, sounds very tragic. And for our American audience, I should also say on our campuses, we usually just can enter. There's no gate, there's no security, etc. And Boazici, I don't think had a very strong security in the past either. But now I believe you have to show IDs and they're able to keep you out if your ID doesn't go through or something, right? Is that is how you're physically kept out of the campus. So that is also yeah. Yeah, important, not only that. I guess. Mm, yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, it's a different situation. We have guards at the gate. We have, uh, you know, uh, fences. Um, but also there's now a blacklist uh, of people who are prevented from entering the campus. So if you're on that blacklist for whatever reason, 
you know, the, the security guards at the gate will not uh, let you go through. And that's completely illegal too, as you know, said in, uh, a few um, minutes ago. Um, uh, you know, why are we on that blacklist? So there's no written um, uh, decision uh, by the administration that says, you know, uh, this person cannot answer the university alumni as well. Some alumni are, some students and alumni are on that list as well. There is no re, um, uh, official document that says, you know, these people should not un uh, enter the university because of this, 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 this or that. So this is this arbitrary decision to punish those, um, you know, uh, who are raising their voices or uh, uh, continuing to, to, to resist. Um, I, the, I, we are totally out of time, but I still feel guilty for not having quite everything covered. And one of the things, and that's partially because I, I as, as an Ottoman historian, the people I happen to know didn't reach to engineering and science departments. So we don't have any coverage from those departments. And yet I do know something happened that was very eerie, very scary that we couldn't even touch upon uh, some data uh, it, it, thing that happened as a result of it. Some people lost their jobs, even though they were actually trying to do their jobs right. Uh, so it, that might be worth sharing in English with an audience. If any one of you knows enough about the case, it's about, I think it was some personal data, private data that was not supposed to be shared, but was being shared. So some people found out about that. And once they found out, they made public, they went public with it. And as a result, they suffered. Uh, anyone among you who is close to the topic who could just tell us only a few things so that the audience would know in a few minutes left? Anyone? Okay, I can I can try. Please, you know, Lajan Buyurun. Um, well, the issue is about uh, contracting out to a company uh, with dubious uh, connections, uh, data security issue for the university. Now, data security is obviously very important, and they signed a document, well, that gave away every kind of access to this company with regard to personal data and information of not only faculty members and students, but also alumni as well. Now, this was uncovered. Uh, by um, uh, Tuna Tuju, a professor in the uh, Department of Computer Engineering, who had been the head of uh, Computer Center and administrative duty some time ago, and who had uh, connections, who has connections to the staff uh, in the Computer Center. The Computer Center staff felt the need to report this uh, very unusual handing over of passwords uh, uh, to this company. And uh, in fact, uh, four members of a University Executive Council um, mandated committee went to the computer center to look at those documents, something that shouldn't have been hidden anyway. But this revelation of the contract uh, and its details to a body completely authorized to look at that, at those documents, were uh, faced with severe reprimands. And in fact, they were suspended. Four members of that committee, the four professors, were suspended for three months from the university for, we don't know what, for revealing in a way, or for looking at documents which should have been open to everyone anyway. And um, one of those professors are still under suspension. In fact, uh, the suspension has been renewed for another three months, while the other three, the, uh, for them, the uh, suspension had been lifted to give the pretense that they're actually doing some kind of a uh, impartial investigation. And uh, so this is still ongoing. We still don't have the true details of it, but our colleague Tuna Tuju is really after, uh, after what, ha what has happened. He's an expert in uh, data security and 
computer networks, etc. Uh, one of the uh, most prominent ones in Turkey. Um, this is this has partially personal and partially partially uh, institutional uh, points with regard to why they are acting like that. Uh, but this is the way they have been acting. They combine uh, the duty of having to transform Boazici with obviously personal uh, vengeance and hatred, etc. And uh, that's how they have been operating. Uh, actually, it also shows how uh, uh, closed in they feel because they react in these completely uh, irrational uh, manners just because they can. And uh, that's both a strength, show of strength, but at the same time, show, uh, uh, also reveals uh, uh, utter weakness. Thank you. Thank you, Ünal Hocam. Uh, Mine Hocam, buyurun. Please, go I ahead. Just wanna, I just want to add, you know, we've been talking about these, uh, you know, quite depressing, uh, depressing set of events, but, there, you know, sort of the personalized nature of this is something to be underscored, but there's also I found something incredibly petty uh, that we kind of could not understand at the beginning, but I think it's becoming very, very clear here. You know, sort of those research centers are being removed for, um, you know, turning them into housing for uh, some of these appointed uh, individuals, uh, right? You know, there is an element of pettiness and vulgarity that we have never been exposed to, which is, I mean, the, the deans never used to have uh, cars with private uh, chauffeurs, right? You know, all of a sudden they 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 start having that. You know, sort of the, the kind of sort of the idea of using and abusing public money. Uh, you know, this is clear corruption. Um, is is being the motto here, which again, as an institution, we were you know we I think we were a set of naive academics <laughs> that were committed to the sort of improvement of this institution as a public university. And we sort of didn't dare even think about these things. And all of a sudden we are faced with this on our day, daily lives. I mean, so I had this beautiful presentation with the colleague, uh, Lisa Widin talks about sort of the neoliberal autocracy um, on everyday life. And I think that's what we're, we're, we're actually experiencing petty politics, corruption and autocracy on our everyday lives every single day, which makes it very hard to swallow, which is why we're screaming so hard, which is why we want our voice out uh, because we're not going to be, uh, you know, sort of be obeying that uh, unless they kind of scrape us off the, the, the campus, which is what they have started uh, to do. But we're going to try to be as resilient as possible because this is indeed very petty. I mean, the transforming this into personal housing, they have changed the legal system to, to get more funding, to get more um, salaries for themselves. Um, you know, sort of literally there is genuine corruption here. Uh, as well, and I wanted to underscore that. Oh, oh plus, you know, using their uh, administrative positions for turning, trying to translate them into academic positions. That's what they're trying to do as well. You know, it's like, here we are, an appointed top-down dean, but I would like to teach uh, in the department. You know, I'm sorry, that's an administrative position. And you can't translate that into an academic position. But again, no reverence to anything in the, our delusion from the in the initial months has been to narrate what we're doing, what we stand for on a continuous basis, relentlessly explain you can't do this, you shouldn't be doing this. Now we are at a very different stage. We've given up, we've understood that this is a political project with absolutely no academic agenda or any kind of sort of improvement agenda uh, in, in terms of the sort of improving Boazic University. So this is a sort of a, a literally a political packing and demolishing agenda period. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mina Hojam. Thank you all. Thank you so, so much. I, I should briefly mention one of the uh, chat messages. There was a point about how this, these kinds of things happen throughout Turkish universities. It's just that they go mostly unnoticed. They don't get enough resistance, etc. That's a very important point to underscore. Uh, what John Hoja was sharing, being disrespectful to your superiors, it has actually entered the regulations of YÖK. Uh, the, and MESA Committee on Academic Freedom, in one of its letters, referred to that as something that shouldn't be in, in, in 
a university higher bodies regulations about discipline but uh, i believe uh, the disciplinary measures on turkish state universities and actually also private universities at this moment are harsher than they were when they were first introduced uh, in the aftermath of the military coup so the 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 new turkey uh the so-called new turkey uh, actually uh, is in many ways much more disciplinary and much more authoritarian than uh, the era of the coup the the uh, it, to to just make a very clear comparison during the era of the coup was it you also received i believe an outside appointment as a president it was one sort of exception to the whole but th that gentleman uh, i read behaved very differently and uh, sort of became part of the university culture rather than trying to change it. It was under a military junta that he came, but he still sort of tried to run the university that well, it used to be run rather than taking it over. Anyway, I, I shouldn't be talking any longer. It's been three hours already. Thank you, Jan Hocam. Thank you, Ünal Hocam. Thank you, Cengiz Hocam. Thank you, Çiğdem. Çiğdem Hocam, Mine Hocam. Hepinize thank you so, so much. Um, hopefully, Hopefully, uh, we'll see changes. Hopefully, we won't have to meet, we won't have to organize a third panel on Boazici. Uh, but uh, please, if you have time, join us next month on, on Turkey Now, when we will look at Yüz Sene Yüz Neste, uh, a project developed by Kültür Hane, uh, uh, which I'm very proud of presenting to an international audience because A, they're all people who were... Uh, Many of them, many of them, not all, but many of them, people who lost their jobs as a result of a signature on a peace petition. And two, uh, Kulturhane, part of it, actually started in Mersin, uh, you know, not Istanbul. So there are things that happen in Turkey all over that are worth uh, paying attention to. So hopefully you can join us next month for another Turkey Now. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Thank Baki. You. Thank you. Kabul etmiyoruz, thank you. vazgeçmiyoruz. We do oh, not accept, we do not give up. Oh, thank Oh, actually, let me add there, if there are any, if there are any volunteers to help with translation, email me, because Boazici faculty does need some support with translating things from Turkish to English to make their voices heard better uh, abroad. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.